Red Hot Comic Book Movie News. Defenders of the Earth. Defenders. The Weekly Planet. The Weekly Planet. Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of The Weekly Planet, where we talk movies, where we talk comics, where we talk TV shows. My name is James, also known as Mr. Sunday. With me, as always, my co-host, it's Nick Mason. But we're not brothers. What? Before he was like, let's go, brother, and I had to clarify that we're not brothers. I've been using that for years. We're not ne- brothers. You never corrected me before. <laughs> I was like, let's do this, brother. And you're like, okay. I was humoring you, but I'm oh. sick of it. Oh. This is like the Banshees of Insurum, a movie I recently watched where there were two friends and one of them was just, for one day, was just like, no. Is we're... that why you're missing all your fingers? Yes, Mason. Wow. <laughs> Wow. I know I didn't offer any kind of warning. I just thought yeah. if I did it, you would take the hint. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I've, called, I've said brother li- roughly 10 times. Yes, you, that's you right. your fingers. So, mm. okay. Anyways, big week this week, Mason, because mm. there's big movie, obviously, with that's Little right. Mermaid. We're going to have a very special guest. That's right. The mermaid. That's right. The titular mermaid. <laughs> Javier Bardem. That's right. <laughs> we'll be swimming his way in. That's right, swimming uh, and smouldering his way into the studio. That's right. Uh, Claire will be here, who people might know as my wife and, oh, yeah. and Mason's brother. Mm-hmm. And, uh, yeah, we're just going to have a good time maybe. I don't know. We'll see. What a reveal. <laughs> yeah. That's You're it. not hearing me this time. No, that's okay, true. That one's real. Okay, great. We're also going to talk about a bunch of things, including more delays due to the writer's strike. I was going to say I love a bunch of things, but you've just said a delay. No, this one's good. I like it. I like it. I think like that's fun. Uh, the future of John Wick. Oh, yes. The future of The Terminator. Ooh. First reactions to both. But do you think those could be combined? Maybe. John Wick v. The Terminator? Yes. Mm. Uh, first reactions for Transformers, Rise of the Beast and Spider-Man's Spider-Verse time. Mm-hmm. Trailers for Barbie and the new Spider-Man game. And then, of course, oh. the thing that I said. Uh, there'll be time codes below. Collins who edits this puts them in. But I guess we have to kick things off. Not I guess. Mm. I'm happy. To, it's sad news, but I'm happy to do it. Yeah, okay. I guess. Uh, Ray Stevenson has passed away at age 58. Too at, young. At the moment, yeah, cause of death is unknown. It happened in Italy. Okay. All that said was a sudden illness that required hospitalization. Now, people mentioned like a number of the stuff that he's been involved in. The, the TV show Rome. That's right. Yeah. I have not seen, but people mm-hmm. love and say he's incredible. Yeah. The Punisher. Yes, he is the, um, he's per- my personal favorite Agreed. Punisher in the, in the grottiest, grossest Punisher movie. And yeah. I say that. With love. Absolutely. Like that's my that's my favorite. It's just the, He's also the, the biggest, nastiest. The yeah, nastiest. A, mm. Shoots the parkour guy with a rocket launcher. That's right. It's, good it's the movie. funniest one, I think, it's as well. It's definitely yeah, the anyway, funniest but one. Directed by Lexi Alexander, who yeah. uh, I think doesn't get enough credit. Or enough uh, uh, directing roles. Completely agree. There you go. Uh, he was in a season of Dexter. That's right. He's in the upcoming Ahsoka series. He's mm. got an orange lightsaber. That's right. So, yeah. That sucks. He's great. Apparently Never very shown. nice, by mm. all accounts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So Volstag. Volstagg, in, uh, in yeah. The MCU, yeah. Mm. Got two Marvel roles. Yeah, but like they could have done more with that as opposed to not doing much. Agreed. Yeah. Sure, yeah. I mean, that's a real shame. Rest yeah. in peace, Ray Stevenson. But yeah, you could literally watch any of the things mentioned and you'd be like, oh, yeah, these are good. Yeah. Mm. And he's good in them. Mm. Yeah. Tangentially related, uh, Tina Turner also passed away. Oh, yeah. You mentioned that, 83. Mm-hmm. Uh, she was, of course, uh, Auntie. Beyond Thunderdome. En- yes, Auntie Entity in, in Beyond Thunderdome. And music. Oh yeah, one of, one of the biggest, did, <laughs> one of the biggest superstars. She, she did that twice as well. Yeah, she was with Ike Turner for a number of years, and mm. that fell apart because he was awful. Mm-hmm. And uh, and then she just started over again and became a huge, uh, you know, mega star again. Yeah, sort of an adopted Australian uh, honorary Australian because of the Nutbush and also because of like simply the best. Yep, you know, with the rugby league. Absolutely, and of course she was in Thunderdome. Yep. Um. Apparently she's in. She was in Thunderdome because when George Miller and Co were writing the movie. They're like, okay, we need a character. We need a, a kind of an imposing character. Who, we have a character. We have Mad Max. That's right. We need a second, a second character. character. If this series could have a second character, we'd appreciate <laughs> it. But they were like, we need a character who, you know, survived the apocalypse like so many people in this in this universe, mm. but not only survived but, like, became better than they'd ever become before. Sure. Like, and they were like, you know, like Tina Turner. And so they were writing and they're like, oh, we, we should you know, make this character more like Tina Turner who, like, you know, had a lot of stumbling blocks but then just came back even yeah. bigger kind of thing. You know, like make it like more like Tina Turner. And then they're like, should we get Tina Turner? Should we ask Tina Turner? Mm. And and they did and she said yes. Yeah, so. she's really great in that movie yeah. also. Yeah. Mm. I, look, I don't think it's the best Mad Max movie. No. But <laughs> Tina Turner's really good at it. I agree, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. The best one is the 2015 one. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> By, Undeniably. Yeah. That's exactly right. Yes, but, you know, it's... Yeah. it's they're all fun. They're all they're fun. All what, a, what a you know, what, mm. a, what an incredible amount of lore and so on and so forth. Yeah, uh, yeah. And they're loosely connected, but not really. 
So, Mason, mm. it's time for delays but good because okay. of the writer strike. Love delays. And we wouldn't good. have delays. Mm. I feel the need to point this out whenever we bring it up if people were paid properly. That's right. This isn't a matter of just like, hey, get back to work, you're delaying movies. That's right. You pay people properly yeah. and then they could go back to work and yeah. earn livable amounts of money. Delays unless you give writers pays. That's great, Mason. I but agree. delays but good is what we're going with. But here's one that isn't being delayed apparently mm-hmm. is Deadpool 3. Yes. So there's a couple of other... Marvel things. There's always things being announced, but mm. two of the big ones this week is Thunderball. 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 Thunderball's been delayed, Mason. Oh my god! The third remake of Thunderball. Now Thunderbolts has stopped, mm. as yeah. has Wonder Man. Mm. But yeah, Deadpool three is going ahead, but and, yes. there is some uh, legalities there, which oh, might because, trip well, it up. Well, um, as I understand it, Ryan Reynolds is a Writer's Guild writer. Yes. So if he improvises on set, as he is wont to do, that counts as writing. Yeah. So that could be a a um a violation of yes. the strike. And also, the last time Ryan Reynolds and Hugh Jackman teamed up during a writer's strike, <laughs> we got X-Men Origins Wolverine, which is bad. Good movie. It Why not disagree. bookend the Deadpool trilogy, mm-hmm. which starts with that? Yes. <laughs> yep. Yeah. The, the Wolverine movies. There we yeah, go. Yeah, That's yeah. a better way to put it. Mm-hmm. Where you've got a bad one at the start and a bad one, bad at, the one at the end. <laughs> you know? Yeah, yeah. And then they could both do one of those. They could advertise their gins and their whatever and be like, yeah. <laughs> Have one of these after a bad movie you made. <laughs> Which we you just watched. We, we, we made it and you watched it and it's all a big tax right off, right off for us somehow. <laughs> That's it. Did you also see Quentin Tarantino was like, what's going on with Ryan Reynolds? <laughs> Did you see that? Yeah, he was like, he made a movie and what was it? Is, he, it, he was, is it real? Yeah, he was like, I hear Ryan Reynolds makes $50 million for this movie and $50 million for this movie and this movie, but have you seen any of them? <laughs> He's right. He's not wrong. I, I, haven't. I have. I haven't. I've seen all of them. I, I haven't think, seen but. Red Notice. Or the other one with mm. Michael Bay, Six yeah. Underground. Mm. No, I saw he came back from the future and he was his own dad and was also yeah. Star Wars. own dad space pilot. Yeah, yeah. I saw that Whatever one. that one's called. Yeah, you saw Is that, that one. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Is it the main guy got paid $50 million all right? Absolutely. Though? I agree. Definitely. Terrific. Love that. Yeah. So it's kind of a gray area in terms of actors being able to improvise on set. Mm. We have we know when uh, the second Daniel Craig Bond movie, Quantum of Souls, because Daniel Craig was not a writer, he was. He was allowed to do it. He was allowed it. to improvise That's interesting, and write isn't stuff it? because yeah. he wasn't. He's not a writer. Yeah, because I guess the 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 idea then is, is if he doesn't have the accreditation, mm. it's probably going to be bad. Yeah. So don't even worry about Absolutely. it. Absolutely. If anything, this is going to prove <laughs> how much you need writers <laughs> because the non-writers are going to come up with a bunch of garbage. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But here's the thing: as you give mentioned, give me back the solace. <laughs> oh, we've dropped the solace. Where is it? Is it, is it it's a, very small? Wait, is it a metaphor? Is it a real thing I can pick up? I'll just pretend to pick up something. You put something in my hand in post. <laughs> uh, but, it's Solace brand vodka. Yeah. <laughs> they, they sort of now. They built a shell company. <laughs> but Ryan Reynolds is an actor and a writer and producer on this. Mm. And this is why the and, Daily... And other things. And other things. A gin why, maker. Exactly. Why the Daily Dot it said Reynolds would probably be doing this kind of work, but if he supports the strike, he'll have to bite his tongue and keep filming with zero rewrites. Scabs and strike breakers risk being reported to the WGA tip line and expelled from the guild. Uh-oh. Here's the other thing, though, with the yeah. character of Deadpool. Mm-hmm. Because he's masked, they can feel a lot of this in afterwards. They absolutely can. As soon as the strike is over. Yeah, you can go back and he can be like, look at my balls. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's mm-hmm. right. Which is obviously in the script, but if they wanted to add more of add that. Add more of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How about, how about he says that every time he kills a guy, they could say. <laughs> You're absolutely right. And they could do it dur- they could do it during filming. There's no way for us to know. Yeah. They could just write stuff and go, okay, well, as soon as, well, we'll just have him look at the camera or whatever. And then as soon as the strike is over, we'd be like, oh, he came up with all these lines yeah. they could say later. So, absolutely. But even the idea of him looking at the camera, yeah. that counts as writing. Does it really? I probably. So don't look at it's the a camera. Because scri- it's a script direction, surely. So. Right, okay. So I guess they I don't know. They'll find spots. I'm sure they'll figure it out. Yes. Or they could just, again, they could just comp in the background later. Yeah. So whatever. Anyone can be anywhere saying anything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 The perfect crime, Ryan Reynolds. Well <laughs> done. <laughs> but it'll be interesting to see how that unfolds. If it does, mm. you know, we'll see what happens. So, Mason. Do you reckon we'll know? if Deadpool When Deadpool 3 comes out, do you think we'll, look, we'll watch it and go? Okay. Yeah, this scene, we, okay I mean, were, you can tell on all of them. That's true. Because they CGI move the mouth yeah, uh-huh. under the mask. Mm. And he's just like, that's Barbara Streisand or whatever. Sure, yeah. <laughs> a thing that he would say, basically. Yeah. What's the thing he would say? He'd say, there's Barbara Streisand. <laughs> yeah. The classic Deadpool non sequitur <laughs> that Correct. we all love. It's just like that Joe Family Guy, actually. Mm, that's true. Which he was on. <laughs> was he? Yeah, he did an episode where oh. he was Peter Griffin, they were in love. I don't know. It doesn't matter. That's great. 
What's important is that I have seen that episode. Everybody remember that. Write that down. Mason, uh-huh. there was a Lionsgate earnings call this week. Love that, whatever that is. Yeah, so they, talk, they talked about the future of John Wick. Okay. And it was headed up by Lionsgate executive Joe Drake. Don't know who that is. Yeah. Good name, though. I agree. Mm. I think John Drake would be better. John Drake. If he was an action hero, I think John Drake would be better than Joe Drake. Yeah. Mm. I was going to say it works the other way, but it doesn't. Drake John. No, that's bad. Drake Johnson. I don't like that, no. Drake John Handgun. That's pretty good, actually, yeah. Thank you. Mm. So, <laughs> now... Dick John Handgun. <laughs> yeah, that's you're right. That's very good. <laughs> so we're now... This is what John Drake... Dick My Handgun friends call said. me Dick. <laughs> Dick John Handgun. <laughs> and then it all comes up in like the Sin City font. Dick John Handgun. <laughs> he said, we're moving across that... Don't forget it. <laughs> that's my name, Dick John Handgun. You wouldn't forget it. Either. No, 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 that's right. I don't believe so. So on the, on, on the topic of John Wick, he said... We're now moving across the franchise, not just in the AAA video game space, Mm -hmm, so I look mm -hmm. forward to more of that, I guess, but looking at what the regular cadence of spin-offs, television, really growing that universe. So there is a a steady cadence of the franchise and there's there's a clear appetite by the audience. It's just word salad, isn't it? I probably read this wrong also. No, I think you've read it. I think you've put, you've probably put more charisma behind it than the John Drake handgun or whatever. (laughs) We're a developer of three others, including John Wick Chapter 5. There we go. That's confirmed. But you can rely on regular cadence of John Wick. Great. <laughs> so he's used the word cadence here a few mm. times. He's clearly just come across this. Mm. Uh, doesn't necessarily apply every time he uses it. But Lawrence Fishburne, like, John, can we rely on your regular cadence? Yeah, I'm thinking you can rely <laughs> on my regular cadence. So I guess if uh, you haven't seen John Wick 3, and I think it's coming to streaming. Do you mean 4? Four, sorry, yeah. You have seen it because somebody put it on Twitter this week. The oh, did entire thing. <laughs> oh, great. The good. entire movie. Wow, that like, that's yeah, great. And it stayed up for, like, days. Well, that's longer than some other things that were attempted on Twitter last week. That's true. You know? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Some things yeah. were attempted and failed almost immediately for a large period of time. But you could just, you're telling me you could just upload a movie, You though. can just upload it in, like, 720p. You can watch that on what your TV, service. probably. Yeah, it's great. Yeah. You, you probably, a bunch of people could probably download it. Yeah. You know, just watch it whenever But at you... least people are talking about it. It's a big <laughs> so success. So true, yeah. But that's the most important thing. Somebody was saying on Twitter this week that apparently the John Wick movies each is re- represents a stage of grief or something? No. Is that that's something true? they made up they made after up? the fact. Okay, right, right. <laughs> when you say mind, they, do you mean the creators or do you mean no, somebody people, on Twitter? Uh, yeah, I don't know. Just somebody on Twitter. Okay, right. Okay, fair enough. Right, right. But anyways, if you saw 4, mm. um, it ends in a way where it's like, where's this going to go? That's right. John Wick 5 is the answer though. Yeah, right. Yeah, so mm. good. After mm. 3, I was like, I don't know. But then after 4, I'm like, all right. Yeah. That was great actually. <laughs> yeah. And make another one Agreed. if you want. Mm. If you want to. That's right. But also we're getting that hotel show. Yeah. yeah. And we're getting ballerina. Next uh, supposedly year, or allegedly. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Here we go, Mason. Unless that was based on, I was going to say based on Anna Diarmas' performance in Ghosted, but who knows whether that was. Yeah, that, that wasn't <laughs> real though, was it? Yeah, none of that was real. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that was a fake movie. Okay, cool. That was a fake movie in an episode. That was a fake movie in a different movie where – uh, somebody is is a, plays an actor who's like, "Why don't you get me any good roles?" Oh, uh, <laughs> my last movie was a movie where I'm I'm a regular guy, and then it turns out my girlfriend's a super spy, and we go in Paris or whatever. It was boring, and everybody hated it. And even if within this movie we're making, it wasn't real. <laughs> I don't know how deep this goes. <laughs> Who am I? <laughs> how not real is this? Yeah. Or am I? Yeah. Mm. Anyway, this is via Rob Mercado on Twitter. Okay. So apparently James Cameron was at Dell Tech World this week. Nice. Hashtag. That would be probably great for the, for the owners and operators of Dell Tech World. <laughs> oh, like the computer manufacturer. I assume so. Okay, right. So he said, so James Cameron just... Hi, I'm Dell. Dell Tech World. Wow, handgun. Right. That's right. <laughs> yes, yes, we are related. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> We're part of the handgun dynasty. You know, we made all those dishwashers. Mm. That's our, our family business. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Uh, so, jo- so James Cameron just told the hashtag Dell Tech World crowd that he started to write a new Terminator movie three months ago but wants to see how AI shakes out before he goes any further. Interesting. Just okay. take a swipe at it, James Cameron. Yeah. You guessed before. What's stopping you guessing now? Don't be a coward. That's right. What's going to happen to AI? Mm. What kind of future skeletons are we going to be getting? <laughs> I want to know. Is it you can, in, in this future, you can trick the T-800s into not killing you by telling them they're like... Hot water heaters or whatever. <laughs> yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Mm. Yeah. You're actually my garage door opener. You can't kill me. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yes, I will. Anyways, I have to go to work, so open the garage, though, for real. <laughs> so, yeah, uh, just the idea that they're thinking about another Terminator movie. Mm. I mean, of course they would be, even though the last seven has bombed. Mm, sure, sure, sure. Um, mm. 
And that last one, like, yeah, lost a lot of money. Do you think somebody put it in his ear that two was great and it's been diminishing returns since and they're like, there's no way. Because I feel like Cameron, a lot of his stuff is responding to challenges. Sure. Do you think somebody's like, well, the last few were bad. You, but un- There's un- no way you could, and they've all, you know, lost money at the box office and he's like, we'll see about that. But unless he's going to direct it, like, why? It's a great point. And, uh, look, if they're going to do this, and I know Arnold has come out and said he's definitely done with this apparently, apparently, mm-hmm. then... then do, do what you did with Prey or The Evil Dead. You make a smaller stripped-down version yeah, of right. different characters, different Terminator, mm-hmm. different timeline or Old whatever. West Terminator. Yeah, it's fine. Mm-hmm. Hit him with a train at the end. Ooh. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's right. Mason. Go on. There's been first reactions, though, to a couple of movies this week. Oh, yes. Transformers Rise of the Beasts, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. where people right. were saying it was actually not bad. I sat through it and it was way better than the several that they made that were really bad. It was Interesting. Better yeah. than that. And maybe the best one. Ooh. Yeah. That's pretty good. So that's good news. I agree. Now, that comes out on the 20th in Australia, mm. but they're doing special King's Holiday weekend screenings, which is the the week that it comes out in the US. Okay. And other For parts the King. Of the world. For the King. Okay. The King's coming over. He's going to watch that's true. Transformers Revenge of the Beast or whatever. It was splendid. <laughs> I'm miserable, but this was okay. Mm. But um, so we probably have to release that show a bit later because okay. I think the screenings that are showing are later on the long weekend. I see. So the weekend that that comes out, the show will be pushed back okay. slightly. I'll be honest, I haven't really understood what you're saying, but we'll, we'll talk about Don't it. Don't worry often. about it. I'm okay. just telling people that in two weeks the show will be slightly delayed probably. Okay, right. mm-hmm. Just Perfect. a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Delays Any, but good. Delays but good, exactly. Mm. And also Into the Spider-Verse, Across the Spider-Verse came out and people yeah. were like, it's the freaking best movie ever made. Yeah, that's right. Now these are, again, early days, mm-hmm. who knows, advanced screenings, et cetera. Uh-huh. But it's not terrible news to be like, <laughs> two movies are all right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And that's good for me, mate. Yeah, yeah. Um, also, shout out to the uh, Transformers enjoying community who uh, seem to enjoy our caravan of garbage on Transforms the movie. Are they? Are we getting insane stuff? I mean, no, I, was I mean, in a very good way. This week. People, people have been quite positive. <laughs> oh, good. Yeah. Yeah. A little bit confused over the name because it's their first uh, exposure to the show Caravan of Garbage. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah of but, course. But once well, they've that, gone over that hump, they're that's like, going to happen. Okay. We weren't that mean. And we did get some it. corrections of like, it's actually called The Transformers the Movie. Well, that's bad. And I know that, but I'm not going to title it that. Right. It's too many thes mm, in, the, in the title. Yeah. It pushes the rest of the. If you're, watching, you're seeing just a clip of the thumbnail, like a yeah, picture yeah. of it, it's going to push a bunch of the, the titling out. Mm, and right. I'm not going to cave to big Transformer. That's right. No matter not how big time. they are. No. What if it was Metroplex? No, uh, go bigger, please. Maybe if it was um, a bigger one. There's no bigger one. Yes, there is. Name one. Uh, well, there's Unicron, obviously. Yeah, but I don't count him as a Triptychon. No, I think Metroplex is bigger. Bigger than Triptychon? Yes. I'm just going to Google something okay. quick. And I'm not talking about toy sizes. I'm talking I know what you meant. Tacon versus Metroplex. Let's say it. No, well, in this video that I'm seeing oh, yes. of the cartoon, mm-hmm. it looks like Triptychon is better, bigger. I don't believe it. But in other places, he looks smaller. Yes. That's something to think about. I think so too, yeah. Yeah, email in. Mm. It's bigger. Yeah. We'll read them all out next week. Mm-hmm. Mason, trailers are high. <laughs> Barbie got a new trailer. Sure did. I went to the IGN comments, which I would okay. recommend never doing. Okay. It's... The worst. On IGN.com, presumably. Yes. Okay, right. Dot com.au. Okay. Because there's um it's it's geographic specific. Okay. And you've that... been banned from IGN.com regular. Correct. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And for good reason. Mm. Uh but even the comments there were like, this actually looks good. Agreed. Yeah. And I agree. Yeah. It does look good. So this is uh um it is the concept that perhaps uh, people predicted, which is a Barbie's it's a Lego movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Barbie Barbie's living in Barbie land. And uh, and she seems to be having some, uh, some some glitching is occurring. Yes. And she's like, well, in order to figure this out, I have to go to the real world. Mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, what's going to happen in there? Adventures probably. Real stuff. Real stuff. And just like in the Lego movie, Will Ferrell is there That's right. in the real world. Yes. I like the little things like the shower doesn't really work because it's a playhouse. Uh-huh. She like floats down from the top because that's what a kid would do. You take Barbie downstairs. Yeah, right. Uh-huh. Like, I liked all those yeah. little touches. She had a Matrix-style uh, existential choice where she had to choose between a beautiful high-heeled shoes and some dirty old Birkenstocks. Absolutely. It's a bit of fun. It is a bit of fun, Mason. Um, so, yeah. What else happens in that trailer? Jokes galore. Jokes galore. Other Pre- versions of Barbie and Ken and whatnot. Barbie and Ken, that's true. Yeah. It's like a lot of fun. Do you think this is going to be like a hit with kids though? I don't know. I don't, even know like, kids, I don't even know if kids still like Barbies. Yeah, they, I mean they do. Right. You see them in the toys. I guess aisle. they're ubiquitous, like they're just around. Yeah, it's like just, a stock thing you can get. It's a stock thing. Mm, so. Like a stocking. Yes. Yeah. So, you know, 
I, but I don't know whether, like, looking at this trailer, like, there are some jokes that you're like, is that something you'd bring, like, a little kid to? Or, but, like, or, or would they not get it? I think they cares? wouldn't get it. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Mm. I think they'd just be like, they're saying funny words. They're saying funny and words. They're asking questions. Yeah. And I'm unhappy about it. I'm going to complain and boycott. Yeah, me too. Mm. I'm actually, I was in the IGN comments earlier. Oh, yes. Week and I was, I was okay. doing exactly that. Mm. The other big reveal we got, we got a PlayStation. Oh, that's the other thing, that they, the other thing of note. What? The other thing of note, James, mm. is that. There's a Nicki Minaj song on the soundtrack that samples Barbie Girl. You know, so, the because they were very clear that Barbie was not going to be. They had yeah. used that song. Yeah, right? so so Aqua was the, uh, sort of. I a, think it's Aqua, but go okay, on. right. Well, Aqua, yeah. like Aquaman, yeah, were a were a Danish sort of pop band in the '90s, and they released Barbie Girl, which was a big hit. But then and Doctor Jones and Doctor. Big year, big year for them. Do you think Dr. Jones is going to be in the Dial of Destiny? 100%. That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. That's the one thing they're going to see in the time portal. <laughs> <laughs> they're like, let's try the future. <laughs> Jones, Jones, coming, Dr. Jones. Anyway, it's all right. It's, it's, I guess. <laughs> I mean, for a follow-up single, it's all yeah, right. Yeah, that's right. Anyway, so, but but Mattel sued EMI, which was um, Aqua's music label. Right. Because they're like, well, you're, bringing, you're bringing Barbie into disrepute. No. And then... Then Aqua sued Mattel because Mattel were like, these people are like bank robbers. They're stealing our stuff or whatever. And, and Aqua were like, we're Aqua, sorry. We'll be, we're like, <laughs> we don't care for this. And that's the famous the other, That's the famous court cases where the judge was like, both parties need to chill. Like that was in the official judgment. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. So And so. Um, I mean, there should be more of that. Just people reaching across the aisle. That's exactly right. Each other. Yeah. Mm. That's great. And it's beautiful, isn't that's it? That's how Matthew McConaughey yeah, yeah. approaches life. Yeah. But then Mattel have since used a version of Barbie Girl in their advertising. I think when their sales dropped. Yeah, like, okay. Barbie Girl. But anyway, I think it's interesting that that uh, they're, they're, they're not using Barbie Girl but they're using this song that has a sample of Barbie Girl. It might be like in the tr- in the credits or whatever. They'll, yeah, They'll maybe, slap yeah. it in there they'll or something. They'll probably slap it in there, yeah. Good stuff, Mason. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Anyway, could be good or big or, or bad and nothing. You're absolutely right. And that's a guarantee. <laughs> that's right. That's the Weekly Planet <laughs> guarantee. Could be big or bad or nothing. <laughs> you can take that to the bank. Definitely. Mason, we Hello. also got a uh, gameplay reveal of Spider-Man 2. That's right. There was a PlayStation showcase. Now, mm-hmm. with this and mm-hmm. uh, Jedi Survivor out, mm-hmm. there's going to be two games that I will play on the PlayStation 5. Yeah. So th- th- this this is probably going to Yeah, gonna this get might be there. it. I, I mean, Spider-Man was the game that made me get a PS4. Oh, really? So this might be the game that gets me a PS5. Yeah. It won't get me a PS5. I have to pay for a PS5. <laughs> it won't get you one? No, it won't get, won't get me a free one. But yeah, we see the black suit Spider-Man. That's right. You're switching between Miles and Peter Parker. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You gameplay. So it's not mechanics. a multiplayer game. It's not a two-player. It's a single player. But you have to switch. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, and so... Yeah, a lot of a lot of new moves. Mm-mm. It's it's you know it's New York again, so it's the same it's the same map, but I think with more areas, yeah. which is what they did with um, New Zelda as well. It's the same or- original map, but they've added to it. I people think. are loving New Zelda. They are. It's, it's the best in whatever. Yeah, people are people are just building insane contraptions in it and uh, yeah. building the metal metal gears and stealth bombers and so I forth. Still haven't played Breath of the Wild, so I feel like I'm never going to get to it. Yeah. And I know people will tell me that I should play both, but. I probably just won't because mm. I'm going to, even though I have a copy. Yes. <laughs> but the important thing in my life is that I'm now looking forward to new games. Oh, yes. And games that I want to play like Jedi Survivor. Okay. Yeah, right. that's where I'm looking. So it's too late. I mean, technically <laughs> Tears of the Kingdom is a, is a new game. It's too late, You're going to skip it? Okay, that's yeah. a shame. It's a yeah. shame for them. We also got a guy who looks like Craven, and you're like, is that Craven? And then Craven kills that guy. That's right. And you're like, is that Craven? And it was. It was Craven. I was expecting a yeah. third bigger Craven. Mm. So it looks like what they're going to do here is they're going to do a they're going to do Venom, yep. and they're also going to do Craven's Last Hunt. Yes, on some level because that that storyline was when Spider Man had a black suit. I don't think it was the alien black suit. No, it was just the regular suit. So yeah, mm. that's all. It's interesting. Happen. Might get a Green Goblin in this. We didn't get one in the last. Well, they game. mentioned Harry Osborn in it. That's true. The mm. Lizard is in this as well. The Lizard is in this. There's a bit where you're underwater and you see the big lizard coming towards mm, you. He's yeah, like, yeah. ooh, don't like that. Yeah. No, thank you. <laughs> Scary stuff, Mason. Yeah. Anyway, it looks like a ton of fun. I'm That's excited really for that. Good. And again, the, the, all the mechanics were super fun. Yeah. Storyline was great. Web wings, mm. which I think was in the Miles expansion probably. Yeah. And yeah. More yeah. well, slingshotting, et cetera. That's right. I want fall damage. Uh-huh. My only request, fall okay. damage, that you can die. All right, great. And hit the ground. And if you and die in, in the game, and you die in real life. <laughs> exactly, yeah. <laughs> we're going to use that weird <laughs> Oculus version that's got a shotgun in it or whatever. It comes with a game. You can't play without it. And if you die in the game, it shoots your head off. Absolutely. That's real and good. Mm. Mm. Well, Mason, what's exciting this week is that you're going to love this. What? Uh, Fast X. 
Fastex had a huge drop off. Is that good? No, that's bad for Fastex. Because oh, well. they're like, hopefully this will have legs over the summer and people <laughs> will keep running back to cinemas yeah, to yeah, catch yeah, yeah. Dom Toretto. What is mm. Fast X? I'm just not supposed to talk yet. Sorry. Wow. No, you, I mean, you We're can. We're already getting emails of complaints. <laughs> Somebody <laughs> coming in and not knowing what Fast X is. <laughs> I know. Terrible. Claire, yeah. it's the 10th installment of the Fast and Furious movie franchise, but the 11th installment overall, if you count Hobbs and Shaw. Fast yeah. and Furious <laughs> presents Hobbs and Shaw. Correct. Oh. And we do. Or oh. don't. <laughs> they should get rid of one. Which one? Three, I think. Two. Four? Four. Four's nothing. Yeah, let's get rid of four. Yeah. Right. Good. There mm, seems great. not enough of those movies. I feel mm. like there should be more of them. Who's this? Yeah, what's happening? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, there's a, you were saying there's a big drop-off. Yeah, big drop-off. Okay. But what that allowed for in the US at least, that uh, the Little Mermaid movie. Oh, yes. A Little Mermaid. Is that right? Seems right. A whole new world. Claire, people we got very... emails about that as well. <laughs> That's from Aladdin. Look, We I'm should have good. picked it up on the time, but we were swept away by, <laughs> by an incredible guest appearance like last week or something. I just, I thought you were going to leave that in. You just, I just came in yelling at you to like finish early. Claire, everything is And then someone content. messaged me to yeah. say it gave them anxiety because mm. they were wrapping up the episode too Also, quickly. I just want to point out, Mason, you know that thing, how she sped us up last week? Yeah, yeah. It for didn't a podcast. happen. Uh-huh. It didn't happen, yeah. <laughs> okay, great. So uh, also, first rule of podcasting, Claire, and you know this, yes. is don't say anything in the microphone that you have to ask somebody to take out because they probably oh. will forget. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that happens yeah. every week to me. Not calling, so. I'm no, he won't forget. I'm yeah. so Unless you command him. <laughs> That's true. Anyways, this movie had a budget of $250 million and probably about $100 million for marketing. You're talking about A Little Mermaid. A Little Mermaid. Okay. You can certainly see every single cent of it on screen at all times. Disagree. I believe, Mason. But I had a US box office opening weekend of $125 million, which is good. It's doing good in the <laughs> US. Great. But in a bunch of... Markets in Asia, including China, it is not doing well. What about and in Oceania, which is us? Doing beautifully there. That's great. So, like, you need China for to like to crack a billion. Often, okay. not always, mm. but often. Yeah, there are complicated reasons why this may not be happening, which I'm not going to get into. Claire, did you expect to have any of this? <laughs> no, this is so upon boring. We mm. mean, so I was boring. Get James, straight into James it. James loves to talk about the box office and the, the like budget. briefly. Oh, I find it mm. so boring. I just want to talk about the giant shark teeth that were on King Trident's head. I didn't notice that at no, all. I didn't notice that ah, either. So I exciting. do want to talk about King Trident because he looks slightly less majestic out of water. We'll get into it. Javier Bardem. Javier Bardem. Oh, Claire's here for people who are. Yeah, yeah so Claire, we're married Hi. and that's – True. Probably the most interesting thing. <laughs> but oh, I think the most no. interesting thing is, and I asked this off air and it turned out to be true, you two watched this movie separately. We with, did. with kids. We, we yeah. Did separate James kids. was absolutely adamant that he couldn't go on his own. <laughs> he was like, I don't yeah. know how, how are we going to watch this movie, but I am not taking myself alone. Yeah, I, I, I went by myself. <laughs> An adult man going to this children's movie by myself on a Sunday, just a, just a, a packed cinema of... Parents and children, and <laughs> and me up the back. I had to pick the one. I had to pick the seat where I'm like, where's where's the least chance someone will see me and call the cops? <laughs> just just in case. You should have dressed in a cinema uh, uniform. I had to th- th- I had to <laughs> think. I had to think about what I wore as well because if I'm like, well, if I wear all black, just, just wear your big trench coat. Yeah, you say, but if I wear like, if I wear, if I wore like. Like all primary colours, they'd be like, what's this dude's deal? Yeah, you know what I mean? Absolutely. Anyway, we, we got through it all, didn't we? We certainly um, did. Yeah. We did. Yeah. Anyway, Claire, uh, the reason you're here is because, for one, you're a girl on Little Mermaid. Mm. Yeah, that's, exactly. Because only women can talk about women-centred that's right. movies. You're also going to come back for the week that Barbie and Oppenheimer come out so we can talk about Oppenheimer, which is about the creation of the nuclear bomb uh, during World War II. Mm. It's Christopher Nolan's latest. We're really excited for that's that. Right. Uh, that's a girl movie, I feel. Mm. And uh, but yeah, you're is. going on tour in the UK. Is that true? That is uh, that is true. I know this you is true correct. because I'm here with mm. the kids during the school holidays. <laughs> He's happy about it. He's yeah. thrilled. He He's going happy, to yeah. the Little Mermaid again. Mm. Mm-hmm. Yes, with both of them. I am. I'm going on tour. I'm taking my album because I like to make music. Things. Sure. Not, and you're going to be playing music from that album. You're not just bringing the album to I show thought people. I would sing the soundtrack to Aladdin. Oh, yes. It's, yeah, but Very then tell good. everyone it's going to be the soundtrack to The Little Mermaid. People would love and that. And that is what I'm taking around mm. with me around the traps. No, so I have written it. I feel funny talking about this in here. Anyway, I have we written talk, an we, album. We podcast in here. Yeah, I know, but it's a different. Everyone hates having a guest on. So <laughs> They do hate guests, mate. Yeah, no, it's true. You don't want a guest. You just want the banter of these You just want the boys. <laughs> A couple of boys couple of talking about a little mermaid. <laughs> I thought that the boys were going to talk about a little mermaid. What's, what's Claire doing here talking about? <laughs> the bottle like it. 
<laughs> that is correct. All right. Anyway, should I just quickly Yeah, yeah, do the dates and whatever okay, and what it's about. do the dates. Okay, cool. So my album's called Matrescence. It's an indie folk pop album. It talks about love and loss, birth trauma as well, which is, you know, obviously quite a dark topic. But mm. I think overall it's really just about the human condition. Yeah. Matrescence is a word that I think a lot of people are really unfamiliar with. And as soon as I explain what it is, it's like a light bulb goes off for so many people. Even my Uber driver the other day was like, yeah, that makes total sense. So... Like adolescents, when we go through these big identity shifts, um, our hormones change, our bodies change, our social networks change, and we're never the same again afterwards. And there's a lot of angst and, you know, all the things. I'm the same. Mason, you're the same? Yeah, but I was Completely. just actually thinking that we stayed the same. <laughs> yeah, you guys say, yeah, yeah. man, she No growth. Been. Correct. <laughs> Zero growth. We're the no growth bros. Yeah, we're not yeah. brothers. <laughs> that's right. Just to clarify. So go on. And that's the same thing that happens when a person gives birth or when they become pregnant. Mm. And so that can also happen to men as well there's yeah. such a thing as patrescence too mm. but it really is a huge shift in who you are as a person this guy's got putrescence yeah pu- <laughs> is that good <laughs> yep <laughs> cool very Thanks, man. stinky um <laughs> anyway so that's what the album kind of is about but mm. i didn't plan to do that i just kind of wrote what i yeah. was feeling um particularly after having long covid and a few things and so Anyway, all that is to say I'm so excited to bring in this show to the UK. I've been invited to speak and sing at a conference mm-hmm. over there, so I thought I may as well do some shows on my own. Have you got the dates in I front of you? I do. I have them. So Go. I'm going to be in London on the 2nd of July, 2 p.m. at a place called The Space UK, which is in the Isle of Dogs, an incredible poet called Holly Mc. Nish is going to be performing as well as Amy Taylor Cabaz, who is a matrescence activist. And I'm going to do my whole album. It's really awesome. Got a rooftop beer garden. It's going to be really great. And if you want to catch up afterwards and chill out, it's just a beautiful venue to go to. Yeah, but don't be weird. All right. I can't promise. I can't promise. Not you. All right. (laughs) I mean, you also. I'm a little weird. Mm. Um, So that's happening. Then I'm also going to be in Exeter. On the 4th of July mm-hmm. at the Hall Exeter, that's a 10 a.m. show, so it's early. Independence Day, love Yeah, it. you need time Correct. for the fireworks. So. <laughs> yeah. Correct, exactly. And the Babies in Arms are welcome to that show mm-hmm. as well. It's not for kids, but if you have a baby and you need to bring them, Claire will hold to. your kid while <laughs> <Yeah>. performing. <laughs> Correct. And then I'll be in Dublin um, on Thursday the 6th of July playing an evening show at 8 o'clock at the Bellow Bar. It's candlelit, it's really moody, it's cool. I'll be doing my album and also some new songs that I've been writing Ooh, as well. Oh, okay. Um, and Amy Taylor Kipaz will be there as well. And then I'm heading to Edinburgh. I'm so excited about this one. I'm going to be playing in a place called The Caves, which is in Old Town. It's kind of like underneath the city. Mm. Um, and it used to be just called Town, Mason. Did you know that? <laughs> nice. Yeah, and then some time passed. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. that's like yeah. you're called Old Man. What? No, what just regular time? man. Regular man. I'm yeah. the same. We talked about this. Mm. You're going to be 40 this year. Disagree. Go on. Anyway. <laughs> Where was I? The caves. Yeah. yeah. So that is going to be at 2 o'clock again on the Sunday afternoon in Edinburgh. Yeah. And there's more dates coming. So you, there's a link in the show notes below on my website, Claire20 Events, or go follow mm. me on Instagram at Claire20 for more. I know that if you're someone that listens to this and you think, well, motherhood, oh, it's not really relevant to me. Yeah. Oh, no. Still, That's all how all our yeah. listeners sound as well. <laughs> it's true. That's yeah. really just how you guys work. No, I, do, I would Ugh. really say. It's not clear. It's actually not. <laughs> There's more nuance to what we do, anyway, actually. We're talking about, we have to talk about The Little Women. We will. I will say, though, that the album isn't just for mothers. No, and all. a lot of people also who might know you through, like, Suggestible or whatever mm. or this or whatever, have, like, might bring their partner or whatever, which is you do not have to do. But uh, No, but, but I yeah, think that's actually have, a lot yeah. of people have – I've written mm. a song about how we met, which is really yep. cute. Um, and often when people bring their partners, it's actually a really beautiful night to then open up discussion about what you've been through, particularly when you've got little kids. Mm. And then also bringing like a mother's group or friends that are doing parenting with you is really cool too because it does just kind of make you reflect on how far you've come and where you're at at the moment. Um, there are songs about things like relationship breakdown but also about love of your kids um, mm. And about desire as well. My first single, Fear to Feel, is kind of like an imagined character song about desire, which is kind of ooh, cool. I know. Ooh. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> all that is to say I'm super proud of it and think they're actually going to be a really fun gigs. Cool. So mm. I'd love to see Well, I'd love to be there, there but I'm not. I'll be here looking after <laughs> the kids and doing the Weekly Planet podcast with Mason. Love that. <laughs> yeah. Correct. Cool. All right. All right. We'll Skype you in. All that's Both linked below. <laughs> yeah, please. Um. This is the part of the show where we ask Mason what the, he thinks the story was. Oh, yeah, nice. The little All right, great. All yeah. right. I'm very excited for this. I'm super excited. All right. So Ariel's a hoarder. Yep. 
She's a big old hoarder. And, and she wished she knew another hoarder. Yeah. Mm. She's a real she's a real surface weeb. <laughs> she loves she's a she's just just a real yeah. real fan of people from the surface. She just drop and just shit collects into the their ocean. garbage and's like, ooh, valuable. <laughs> Love this. And she wishes she knew another hoarder. Yeah. And then maybe there is one. <laughs> Maybe there's a, and it's a, he's a prince. He's a dude. But he lives in the surface. So what's she going to do? Magic, probably. And he's 21, isn't he? He's definitely 21. <laughs> he does not look 21. No, no, he's 21 in the movie. They say it. There's a moment where, like, he's been in the water and his hair's, like, down or whatever. And I'm like, oh, okay, I can sort of see how he would look 21. <laughs> how he, how, he's he, been, how he used to look. But he's been given an old bloke haircut. Yeah, yeah, He's yeah. been given an old, olden time. No, I was trying to do the Eric from the... The, the cartoon. Mm, it's a Mr. Right. Darcy kind of, sure. kind of haircut. I can see it. Mm. Now, Claire, you're a huge fan of The Little Mermaid, the original, but also notoriously, <laughs> as you said recently, you hate mo- all movies. That's true, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah you blanket. said you only like <laughs> film. Yeah. And it didn't backfire at all. No, nah, it was Nobody fine. Nobody sent yeah. me any emails. It but, was fine. <laughs> what did you think, being a fan of the original one and also hating the Disney remakes, uh, in, I think you hate, except for Cinderella, which is and also I the really one I really like. hate any kind of like CGI creatures as well. Yeah, you hate the lion. I mean, you hate the new Lion King. <laughs> I, I mean, hate everyone hates movie. everyone hates the new Lion. Okay, King. but what if they're yeah. right in the middle of looking like boring, like real sea life, <laughs> and but they've got some elements of, yeah. of being like a cartoon character? What do you All like right. that? Do what if the cool? crab is Jamaican? <laughs> For example. What if that? Yeah. All right. So I have. What if the bird can breathe underwater? (laughs) What if that, for example? No, that's actually like they did. They they chose a different breed of bird that could swim underwater. They did that. Breathe and talk underwater. Talk underwater. Well, and yeah, sass? because it's a seabird. Mm. It's like it's supposed to be able to. I don't, I don't know about they, I don't talking, think they can but... talk underwater. No, I agree. Right. I have kept in a vault how I felt about this movie mm. because I, I you kept sense. trying to like spark me over in the kitchen. You'd be like, how about the Sebastian Crab? And I was like, no, I'm not telling you anything. Do and you she still think... won't. Yeah, good. <laughs> do you think I liked it or not? Yeah, James? I think you did like it. How do you know? I can tell. Yeah, no, I, think... I really <laughs> loved it. I loved it so much. I, I, I cried. I cried in the bit where she's hoarding in the cave and she sings the song about part of your world. I've got I so cried. much garbage. <laughs> what do I do? What no, is this even? It's, oh, okay. For example, like the I bird know told that me there this are... fork is a comb. I don't know whether that's true. <laughs> now I haven't seen the original the of this. The Dingle Hopper, James. Yes, that's I what know. it's called. I've... How close is this to the original? I've seen it's, the original. It's longer, it's very certainly. Close. It's yes. very close. It's too long for me. Th- this oh, is it th- is brilliant. Go. My daughter and I loved it. We watched every single second of it. She's three, and she sat through the entire thing, including the credits. Yeah. And the whole time she was like, "This is great." I'm like, "I know," <laughs> and it was so good. I will give you it. this. Like, this is not for me. So I was just like, "Whatever." Like, yeah. I. But Halle Bailey. So good. Genuinely amazing. Good. Really yeah. good aerial. Yeah. Like she'll go so far. So incredible. Or she'll just do this role again. Do you know again. she was the <laughs> first one they auditioned and the director cried? That happened to Alden Ironreich on the movie Solo. <laughs> oh, my you, goodness. You knew that. but uh, I didn't know that. But there you go. Yeah, no, Rob Marshall said he cried when he saw her perform that song, Part of Your World. Which one? The, the part of your world, the quarter song. I don't know. Yeah. Mostly. Anyway. The whole no. part of your world. That song. You know the song. So, Put, okay, run a let fork me, through your hair. Okay. I know that you feel have many feelings about many other movies where you have big emotions. No, including I know. things like Harrison Ford maybe in the next Indiana Jones and you're hey, James, holding out James, hope have you, know, have you noticed that, that Claire, Claire talks with her hands? Yeah. You noticed that, whereas we don't at all. <laughs> <laughs> There's no movement at all. You're locked in. Yeah. Look, I have a telling heritage. I'm very passionate. I have to say. Like one eighth. Okay. <laughs> Counts. It's in there somewhere. Nah. Mm. Okay, so let me explain to you why this movie is so great on so many levels. Okay, for people like me. Yeah, I don't disagree with that. And at I all. don't mean just women. I just mean people who watch this as a kid and loved it. Yeah, yeah. I watched this movie as a kid. Yeah, this, this exact movie. <laughs> Mate, so stop being annoying and let me have my my little Claire. Time that's in that's the my sun. whole brand. What are you talking let about? My whole my brand is being annoying. <laughs> what do you think he's here for? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, to chip away at your enthusiasm for this movie. <laughs> James said it in advance. It break my heart. He said, it doesn't matter whether you may so like this movie or not, your job is to chip away at Claire's enjoyment until she realises that it wasn't that good and she goes away deflated and dejected. Well, joke's on you because that could never happen because I'm the most enthusiastic person that's ever lived and I love this movie. All right, then. We'll see Let me explain that, to you, dum-dums, why it's oh, so wow. good. I, I like know. This. I know. So I know I feel bad. I I didn't really. Know <laughs> it's that. fine. Yeah, I'm so sorry. Okay, so when when you watch this movie as a kid and people who loved this movie, I know my brother loved this movie as yeah. well. It means a lot to him too, because that that whole scene in the cave is about. I know this is really obvious, but it's about like wanting to be somewhere different and being trapped 
where you are. Mm. And I think that's a really important and deep narrative for a lot of women, but also a lot of queer people too, Mm. where they feel like they want to be someone new, where they feel like they have this sense that they're someone else and they really are longing to be there. And it's kind of like representative, I guess, as well of being like a tween or a teenager and being stuck in a really conservative household or in a place where you can see this version of who you want to be, but you can't quite get there for lots of different reasons. And that's why that song means so much to so many people. Why Halle Bailey did such an incredible job with that song because she managed to sing it in a way that was even more poignant than the original Ariel. I mean, you get like the emotions and whatever. <laughs> no, that's a great way to summarise what Claire has just said there. It's about the emotions, <laughs> yeah, the emotions and whatever. <laughs> and also being a woman of colour as yeah. well. You cannot like... Because as you count that narrative, no, too. and as you've uh, probably heard, or maybe you hadn't, yeah, it was really you're not, controversial. Um, you're not I know, but yeah, there's a lot of people who, yeah, were like it doesn't even make sense from a scientific perspective, which is ridiculous. Fucking roommates, who cares? Like, but uh, also, as so many people said online as well, that kind of narrative of a mermaid or a merman mm. has been in so <laughs> many <Mermin>. a mer- <laughs> like Eugene Merman, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> has been in so many different cultures around the exactly, world, right? Yeah. And in indigenous cultures, particularly. Yep. So it's just ridiculous to think that a woman of color couldn't play Ariel. I think she's brilliant in it yeah. regardless anyway. I think um, she's also brilliant from the perspective that a lot of this is set underwater, so she would have filmed it? it in front of a green Is it? No, set underwater. I really underwater. wondered okay, right. how they filmed this because I actually think it looks beautiful. I know you don't think Some it does. Some of it. I don't think I any of it looks it. like it's taking place underwater. <laughs> no, I think, yeah. I think Avatar 2, I think, I ruined think that, the oh, underwater. If, if, yeah, if, yeah. Like I think the, there was the some like different mermaids or no. I think that was that beautiful. was intentional. Like there was like creative liberties with how like underwater works and whatever compared to like Avatar, which you haven't seen. It's fine. You don't have to. But but yeah, I think the fact that she gave that performance underwater, talking to nobody for most of it, is really something. Because mm. what would have she been talking to? A stick. Like a stick, a tennis ball. Yeah, like someone off camera, a wet go, one too. Going like, yeah. "Yeah, man, I'm a crab." Like that's hard. <laughs> yeah, probably. Yeah, because yeah. even... he's not a crab. That's the thing. That <laughs> no. was that would have been a man. <laughs> would have been a man. You know that iconic scene. You probably don't because you haven't seen the original animation. I have where seen the original. Where she flicks her hair. Yeah, and she kind of comes out on. They do the it in the, the movie. Like, yeah. yeah. Well, this is what I'm saying. So in that moment, apparently her wig was so heavy, she felt like her neck was going to snap off because she flicked it out. And that would have been a movie. Yeah, mm. that would have been a movie. Whole head comes off. The rest of the movie, she's just crooked to the side. Yeah. Yeah, completely. I do actually think what was interesting too is that Lizzo auditioned and campaigned to be the role of Ursula and she actually donned all the makeup and did a video and tried to become Ursula. Oh, okay. She was looked over and was, See, was obviously I, given to Melissa I, McCarthy. I like Melissa McCarthy a lot, but I think I think she like the look was nailed and whatever. Yeah, yeah. But I don't think she was used enough like of what she's good at. I don't think she's in it enough. I don't think she's given enough like weird, funny stuff to do because the weird kind of funny, creepy stuff is like I think they could have pushed that further. Yeah, I loved it. I th- because No, I like her, but I'm saying yeah. they could have done more with it is what I'm saying. Yeah, I see what you mean, but I also think, as you said, it was long enough anyway. Boy, but also it. watching it with my daughter because, remember, it's a children's movie. Sure. It's scary. <laughs> that All of that Ursula stuff is really scary. Mm. And so if you – Extended it even I wasn't more. Scared. <laughs> <laughs> like Poor Unfortunate Souls is one of the best songs in that whole film. Mm. I thought it was really good. I mean, Melissa McCarthy had never done any singing before that. Probably Lizzo in the role would have been much more interesting. Though yeah. I did watch her audition video and it wasn't very good. Oh, <laughs> I know her voice was really good, but wow. her acting was not so good. So but much then, for women know. supporting women. <laughs> I, I know, agree, Mason. Mm. I love you know Lizzo. Well. I love Lizzo. I'm yeah, such yeah. a massive. But Lizzo you're saying fan. she wouldn't have been like right for it. Well, I don't know, but I don't know whether she's an actor yeah, is okay, what I would enough. say. Mm, yeah. Whereas obviously Melissa McCarthy has got that comedic physicality, which mm. I think she lent really well to Ursula. Oh, look, I don't know, maybe I'm clouded by just how much I loved the original animation. No, but I, I don't think that is the case. Because the, also a lot of people will be like, I love the original so much yeah. that I hate this one. Because the Lion it's not King. The same. Yeah, that's the Lion <laughs> King syndrome. And all the other ones except Aladdin, which I liked. Yeah, I also liked Aladdin. We're the two people on We're the, the two world people who liked, liked Aladdin. Aladdin. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Let me ask you this: the guy gets a song. He gets one song. There's the three Prince Eric. songs. Prince Eric. Right? He gets Is a it song. Jonah Howard King. Is that yeah, something like that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He gets a song, and it's just 
I, I'm, I, I'm is wanna... it the same? Is it the same setup as in the animated movie? Because no, he doesn't. Because in this, a... he just it's just him sort of walking along the rocks, and it feels like the, it's <laughs> it feels like such an empty. Like I think his singing is fine or good or what have you. Yeah, I like but, him. Yeah, but it's just it feels so weirdly empty because he's just walking along mm. just right. at the side of a, the the beach, and is like, never I have I ever I saw heard a, girl. a statement. Yeah, I saw a girl. Well, yeah, but never have I ever. And then he's heard on a boat. And he's like, from bye. That, like. It's such a, that's such a straight dude perspective because he's so incredibly good looking. I loved that scene, Is he? and so many of my friends are like Prince Eric in the cartoon was like their original childhood crush. Well, right. And so At he, Mason's was made Marion. Yeah, well, there that's you not go. true. That was you. That was you. You're thinking. <laughs> no, but so that whole song because that's not in the original. That was written by Lin Manuel Miranda yeah. for the musical, which I think is. Really I know there cool. was. He's... I know because there was a rap in this, so I knew. <laughs> I, I recognized. <laughs> Yeah, but I so I actually really enjoyed. I liked the new songs, and I love that bit where he's like singing on the clifftop, and yeah. it's about wild ocean adventures. See, or I just felt it felt really weirdly we empty because he's just sort of like <laughs> just just walking down a path, and then Somebody then he's on a boat suddenly, and then yeah. he leaves. But he's like singing about like wanting this girl that he can't find. You know, so are there more songs? Are there, are there fewer songs in this than there are in the original? Because it three, feels like there's, three more. No, there's, there's more. more. There's yeah, more. Yeah, and I think that's such a. Gamble, because I've, I've got a headline here, uh, Claire, that I thought I'd bring up. Oh, interesting. I think it was by um, Rolling Stone. It says, the little the, he- the headline is, The Little Mermaid remake boasts one of the worst Disney songs ever. And then under that it says, Offending song in Disney's live action adaptation of The Little Mermaid is, is a rap-heavy number from lyricist Lin-Manuel Miranda, and it isn't the only dud. And then I went to read the rest of it and it was paywall, and I went, eh. Yeah, whatever. It's not worth it. Yeah. <laughs> not worth it. You shan't get me to click and put in my credit card details. No, no, no. I Look, I even loved the I didn't set. mind them. I thought, I it, thought was... it was fun. I, I liked the way that um, – they kind of combine the set. It's the set they like filmed in Italy, mm. but the island scene is like the Caribbean mixed with like the 1800s, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, I loved that. And I liked that rap scene. I liked when they were all doing the dancing. Like that was new. That crab needs to chill the fuck out, man. <laughs> he's just, I don't like him. He's got but a he's, bad attitude. But he's under pressure. He's under a lot of pressure. Leave. The king's going to kill him. <laughs> yeah, the king, the king will gonna... kill him if he doesn't. <laughs> There's a lot of lot of vague contradictory instructions, and if he doesn't follow all to the letter, the king's going to just crush him. You're absolutely right. Shoot him with that hot trident or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what though? I normally hate. You can't Egypt. come back from being shot with a hot trident unless you're the king, in which case you, you, you can. Oh wait, spoilers. It's fine. Yeah, everybody's seen. Uh, <laughs> spoilers well, from now. Everybody's seen a Little Mermaid. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah. Do you know what? I usually hate CGI animals, but I love them. I love Do you think the they crab. got the, they got the balance right? Yeah, I really because- do. As we've discussed with, like, the Lion King, if you make it too realistic and they're trying to emote, you don't get anything. Mm. Just, like, blank cat faces but looking at, the, at each other. On the other. on the other way, like... Freaks. Yeah, and exactly. <laughs> Flounder is... Because I've, I've not seen that one, but I've, Flounder's a big yellow fish, right? Yeah. And he's very... And if you Puffy. go too far in that, people are like, yeah, right, what, what is that? Freak. freak? But, but this version, he's just sort of pale. <laughs> he is quite pale, he's pale, isn't, isn't he? Isn't he? Yeah. yeah. I actually think he was great. I, I mean, look, I don't know. I just, I don't know what it was about the CJ creatures. I thought I would hate it when I saw Sebastian pop up. And then he started talking. I feel like they got the balance right. Like his face is friendly enough yeah. and human enough without being creepy that you actually believe that he's talking as still a character. Still needs to chill out. I was like at one point, yeah. I'm like, that crab looks delicious actually. <laughs> or a raw. There, I think a that raw was live why he was crab. Because he was quite chubby No, I'd cook as him. a crab. I'd cook him basically. Right, I'd call. boil him. Yeah. And he'd go, oh, no, man. And I'd be like, yes. Yeah, Mon. Yeah. Sorry, Mon. <laughs> you had your chance. Hey, here's a question. In the original, is there a scene where Ariel is given a flower and she eats the flower? Oh, I don't think there's that market scene isn't in it at all, right? Because in Aquaman, Mira is given a flower and she eats the flower. And I'm like, okay, was that a reference to the Because then ah. I'm like, oh, is that, cause is that a reference to the original? It's a great question. I think Little she does eat a flower. Okay. I don't think it's in the market scene, but okay. I think she does eat a All flower. Right, look yeah. it up. All right. The little yeah. mermaid. Around the same time as or similar to when she like uses the fork to try and yeah, give herself right, a little right. hairstyle. Mm. James is very disappointed in the kiss. I've, I've got two oh. things that I want to say that I was disappointed oh, yes. in. These okay. are the things that I was looking out for. There's a moment at the end in the cartoon where the – um, Ursula transforms into like the beautiful woman with the voice to to trick mm. the to trick Eric, and he's like, I oh, I don't know about this, but I'm conf-. in them. Mm. It's it's sort of different in the movie. Eric's less of a character, I feel like, in the animated one than he is in this. Mm. They give he's- him more to do, and by that I mean this movie's longer. 
But there's a moment when Ursula like bursts out. She like unfolds. She burstalers. Like, she burstalers out. You know, it's like a real kind of horrific kind of like. Yeah. Like a gross kind of like thwack. And out like, of this mm. woman that just yeah. looks like. And a they movie. didn't do that. There was a cloud and then she was like, ha ha, I'm a squid or whatever. Mm. So that bit I was like, boo, I was looking forward to that. The other bit was when they were doing the Kiss the Girl song. There's a moment in the, um, in the, in the cartoon where the oar comes up and there's a bunch of frogs doing harmonies on the oars. Okay. And I'm like, I just want to see some frogs. Yeah. Okay. But don't yeah. the main cast Yeah, but the, well, I wanted the frogs, Mason. <laughs> right. okay. I didn't want these other ones. I wanted yeah, the, there's a right. bird, that bird that could breathe underwater and mm. the crab. <laughs> it's a good one. There were some things in this where I just thought visually was like, that's not interesting. I also think, and I know she was like looking to escape from under the sea. And then Sebastian's like, under the sea is great. And I'm like, this place sucks. Your chairs are coral. Everything's boring. The only interesting stuff is the stuff that like fell out of a ship. This is not a good place, which I guess is the point, right? Mm. But I thought that was beautiful. I loved the way they redid Under the Sea. I thought the the way that they used all those different sea creatures were Still amazing. look like shit, I would have been. What? No, I mean like, like as a place to live. I can see why she was like, I don't like this. <laughs> yeah, I mean the thing about it is is that every second scene under the water is dim and and sad looking and yeah. and awful and filled with horrible sea creatures and it's like up up the top was always nice way better that's what the, the song should go up the top was always, <laughs> yeah. top nice. Is always I nice I think yeah. also and I because we the, a lot of the clips they released beforehand and images were really dark mm. but it's not as dark as you'd think yeah you can mm. see stuff that yeah. like I found it quite vibrant a lot of the time. Mm. I can't remember what I was going. But I think this. also there's that quote. I can't remember who it's from, but it's from director or somebody. Doesn't yeah. matter. But somebody was somebody asked him, "Hey, where's the lighting coming from this scene? Like, why is this scene so well lit yeah. at, at night or whatever?" And he's like, well, "Where's the music coming from?" Yeah. Like I feel like oh, it's totally. The, I don't it's the same thing. Like, d- d- give me, give me, give me a better lit movie. You know yeah. what I mean? It, d- I don't want natural lighting in this live action Disney movie. Give yeah. me yeah. just just make it brighter. It's yeah. fine. I just really didn't notice that at all. Mm. I, I really enjoyed this the contrast between the two. And I also really enjoyed how when they were building the set, they wanted to make sure that all of the mer people were dressed in, you know, their costumes are all from things that would be found under the ocean, which is why they had to use shark teeth for yeah. the crown. Six pack rings. That all the different <laughs> mermaids were had such really particular <laughs> I just at least heard that. <laughs> You're very funny, Macy. Thank you. Um, aesthetic, like mm. you know, and so I found that beautiful too. And yeah. so did my daughter. Like each tail was really different. I loved the way that the mer tails had like yeah, I like that like design. Extra fairy fins. The also back thought of I had was when they get older. Do, do bits fall out of their, mm, of their fin? The Does it thin and, out? And whatever, not gills, yeah. Yeah, yeah is it, oh, oh, I like there was like a sheen of like, oh, you'd see it on their skin sometimes in certain light. You'd mm. see like there was like a scaly pattern on them, which I like. Yeah. I, I don't know how many mothers, uh, Triton, like like how many different yeah, mothers there were. What a, what a multicultural family <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> from all corners of the globe. Mm. Yeah. I mean, I also really love that even though I know if you think about it too hard, who knows. Oh, it's fine. But, who cares? You it's, know. Magic right. world and whatever. Yeah. I did think it was funny what you said about how when King Triton comes out of the oh, yeah. out okay. of the ocean. So what like in underwater Javier Bardem. By the way, this is his second underwater movie. He did it was in Salazar's Revenge. Oh yeah, it was the too. fifth or sixth Pirates movie That's or whatever right, yeah. it was called. Mm-hmm. Dead yeah. Man's Underwater, whatever That's it was right. called. Mm-hmm. So he played an underwater man with underwater hair. A lot of underwater hair in this C- CGI happening. Yeah, how do you do you think they did this? Bald cap and then yeah, redid the hair? Definitely. Okay, Because right. none of this was underwater, mm. really, except for the stuff where they come out. So underwater he's got like he's like he's, he's like his armour on and he's got his big glowing trident that can mm. shoot his people. His hair's kind of billowing and it's out. it's billowing out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And there's a moment at the end, like towards the end of the movie, where he just pops his head out of the ocean. Just loops out. And it just looks like <laughs> Javier Bardem in like a like a wet wig glued to his head. He's in a, just in like, a, a kiddie pool. <laughs> yeah, he's just like, <laughs> and it looks way less majestic yeah, yeah, yeah. when he's out of water. Yeah, he should have emerged on like a shark or something, yeah. you know, but no. And just like, Bleh. And also that way they don't have to, they don't have to do his... Abs. Uh, he, well, they don't have to do his abs. <laughs> they don't have to do his his merman tail yeah. in that scene. Like they save it if he's just sort of exactly half him, half of him's but out of the water. That's also from the original though, and I and I know. Oh I, no, I liked it. I thought it was funny. I, also, <laughs> <laughs> I cried in that bit. I, like, which I I know I can't. I think it's father daughter stuff. Totally that gets yeah. me. And yeah. and there is something really beautiful about him deciding to to let her just do what she wants and mm. be who she wants and accept her for who she is. Mm. And, I mean, there's a lot of sort of feminist kind of commentary around this film. Obviously Ariel's voice gets stolen from her in the original and she, like, gives up her identity for a man. Like, that's one way of looking at it. Yeah. Also um, the siren song is cheating. 
as far yeah. as I'm concerned. Like I agree. In terms of like. You You're should. saying Ursula was right to take it away. I'm saying I'm <laughs> saying it, it's a it's a trick, and you should rude. you shouldn't be able to do it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you shouldn't be able to do it to lure men to the. Oh, maybe you could. You maybe you can lure men to the death. <laughs> yeah, that's but You fine. shouldn't be able to do it to make men <laughs> to fall marry in love them. With you. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's not uncool. <laughs> it's uncool, Ariel. It's uncool, Ursula. Is all I'm saying. <laughs> So, I, but there is another interesting school. Get a personality thought. is what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah. I could say the same for you, Mesa. Whoa. <laughs> I right have though. one. It's called my beard. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have to develop a personality oh, that's further. That's why it's I've got just getting beard. longer and That's longer. right. Exactly. Oh, now yeah, it all nice. makes sense. That's right. I see. Mm. No, so the other school of thought around that is that actually um, King Triton is the one that is blocking Ariel from being who she wants to be and constantly silencing her and not listening totally, to her. Totally, yeah. And so the fact that then she goes to Ursula, who is a sea witch who's been kind of ostracised but mm. is actually single and like a senior woman and ready powerful. To mingle. Mm. Single and ready to mingle with some and strangle. red yeah. <laughs> fish paint on her lips or something yes, when yes. she does. Mm. There's that. There's this kind of thought process there that actually Ursula allows her the avenue to be able to I, pursue what she actually wants. I definitely had that thought in this. It's like, mm. yeah, I know she's like wants to get the trident to shoot people or whatever. Yeah, nice. But there is an element of like she's actually giving Ariel with with like caveats, obviously yeah. for evil purposes, but things that like she her dad wasn't willing to give her. Mm. Yeah, mm. absolutely. And or probably buy cigarettes too. <laughs> <laughs> and what I think when I watched this was as a kid I always wanted to be Ursula. I loved that song. I yeah. think it's such a great song and – um, she's you want to give kids of, cigarettes. I definitely do. <laughs> that has been my dream and that's why I had two and when they're old enough I will give them. them. Nice. 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 <laughs> Excellent. Well, go, start buying them now because the prices are going to go yeah, up. Yeah, so. no, oh, yeah, yeah, I've been yeah. investing. Buy low, yeah. Yes, yeah, so for yeah. the last 10 years. You see there's a, there's a low, cigaretto chest yes. <laughs> in our bedroom ready for them. I've got like in great like little lighters with their names. Oh, in that's there. right. Oh, yeah, that's yeah, their 13th birthday. Terrible. God. It's your idea. Yeah, yeah, yeah one yeah. of my songs on my album is just that, talking about <laughs> kids smoking. <laughs> be who you want to be. Anyway, no, don't smoke. Terrible. Never smoked. Never understood it. It's I cool. It me asthma. Because it's cool. The only time I ever smoked was one time when I was 14 at the bus stop. One of my friends gave me her cigarette and I didn't know what to do with it, so I just kind of like tried to take a drag. I coughed over and then I just held it while it burned all the way wow. to the nub and burnt my fingers because I didn't want to drop Where it. Where did she go? Well, she went to go talk to a boy and by the time she came back, I was just holding like the nub with like burnt fingers. Wow. <laughs> she was like, what are you doing with the cigarette? I'm like, I didn't know what to do. You gave it to me. That's on her. Yeah, yeah, true. Exactly. Mm. Anyway. Um, and they're married now though. So. Yeah, right. so, you know, it was worth <laughs> it. It was worth it. Uh, oh, what a nerd. In a good way. Anyway, what I will say about Ursula is that she uh, not only was she like a woman and an older woman mm. as a villain, which obviously in a lot of the Disney movies they paint older women, particularly single older women, as yeah. villains, like mm-hmm. like Maleficent, all the things, very problematic. Which we all like here, yeah. correct? Yeah. <laughs> That's correct. Yeah. yeah, cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good. yeah. Excellent. So we're on the same page, yeah. Correct. Mm. She's also like voluptuous as well, yeah. like a totally different body type to all the kind of stereotypical Disney princesses. She has this incredible kind of vocal rasping kind of sexy song for a woman at that in that kind of role. And then she has so much agency. So it's just it's really, I think, interesting for her to be painted as that villain the whole time. Mm. And then if you look at it through a feminist lens, you can kind of see it in a different way and you wonder, well, why is she Why is she so angry? Maybe because she's had that power stolen from her and not been given yeah. her her appropriate kind of... Claire, can I ask you, from a feminist perspective, do you yes. think it was cool when she got stabbed with a whole ship? A whole ship <laughs> I kind of do, actually. I <laughs> wanted her to be... She looked too, like, not real. I wanted to be, like, actually, like, big Melissa McCarthy. Yeah, but yeah, it was yeah. Kind she looked of like too a, spectral. Yeah. Mm. But, I, again... Kids movie. Is that how she dies in the Yeah, original? man, she gets a ship. I think that was good, though, because in it's a kid's movie and if she was too realistic, then she gets, Inglis McCarthy gets stabbed in the guts. Yeah, I think I think the little mermaid terrifying. should have said, you got shipped. Because that's an expression the children <laughs> we ship. We ship you. We ship you with a ship. <laughs> you and this ship. Here's a question. Why don't you get married to this ship? <laughs> oh, you can't, you're dead. You're dead. <laughs> <laughs> Here's a question. Doesn't Eric kill her? Because Eric, Eric kills her in the... Cartoon, doesn't he? Yeah, but, but she, they changed that to yeah. like she impales herself or whatever. Because mm, she learned the little mermaid no, learned to do the. Halle Bailey did that. Oh, she okay. Drove the, um, she learned how to, to steal oh, the ship. Right. Oh, that's yeah, freaking sick. Yeah, 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 I forgot yeah. about that. Yeah, which yeah. I really love. And that's another thing I loved about it. It's a, just a little shift, but I just don't think you can underestimate how powerful it is for girls women to, to kill be, women. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. 
No, but for women to be watching and for girls like my daughter to be yeah. watching a movie where A, the hero is a woman of colour and B, she's not just like a damsel in distress. She has agency of her own life and she really does save the day. Yeah, she murders that woman. She does. Yeah. But she also saves Prince Eric as yeah. well, which I think is really interesting. Doesn't she do that in the original? Yeah, nice. she does, which I also loved. Really? You know? but she also wears that hat or gives him a hat. <laughs> He gets his hat, a new look. He right. does. He gets yeah. a new look like on an her. angle or something. Yeah. A little, a little straw hat. Here's a question for you. This is Mermaid Law. Ooh. So she's the Ooh. sister of Tri Triton, Trident. Mm-hmm. Ursula. Ursula is. Okay. Right. Why is she a squid? <laughs> is she actually his sister though? That's what they said, right? I think so. Oh. I mean, I'm assuming it's some kind of dark magic situation. Probably magic, yeah. 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 She probably used to be a dolphin. <laughs> yeah. And magic. The top half was I a dolphin. Yeah. <laughs> bottom half was a squid. That's right. <laughs> I love it. I think so. I yeah. think you're right. I mean, an, like, is it a squid or an octopus, a squid? I think they changed it. It was one in the first one and they changed it for this one, I believe. I feel ah. like it looks more like a squid in this, but I don't know it's why. got some I'm squid facing. kind of. Yeah, I mean, octopus. I liked her cave. That was yeah, cool, man. That's cool. It was really cool. All mm. her different cupboards. Yeah, really man. Like that. <laughs> looking very, for stuff. Yeah, very looking good. Stuff. Love looking well, for stuff. Here's a question for both of you. Yes. Why is that some of the fish can talk and sing songs and so forth? Because some are for eating. Oh, like the shark? Like the shark wasn't a guy, was oh, he? No. The shark was not a guy. As far as I know, he was just a shark, right? <laughs> Maybe he is, though. He might be a guy, yeah. just an angry guy. Just an angry guy, get out of my way. <laughs> He's one of those guys where you, you, you take too long at the, at the pedestrian crossing. He's like, get out of the way. <laughs> I'm like, jeez, man. Chill I'll out. eat you. Uh, here's a question for you. Uh-oh. Do you know the character that was not present in this new movie that was in the original with his own song? His own song. Yeah, oh. and it has a similar like sort of theme as you were just talking about, Meso, with like fish and things. No, no idea. Oh. No idea. Who? Pivotal, pivotal, core, His core character. Pivotal. <laughs> pivotal, <laughs> pivotal core. <laughs> pivotal core. Okay. No. Do you do you remember the song Le Poisson, Le Poisson? He, 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 ho, ho, ho. I do. Oh, yeah, that, that guy with a cleaver, like hack them in two. Yeah, he's so a, there's a, a chef. Yeah, chef Louis. Chef okay. Louis is no longer present. So is, he, is he a man or is he a fish? He's a man. He's a, man. He's okay. a French chef in the castle and he sings that Le Poisson song where he's just oh. like chopping fish all the time. Sick. And Flounder right. and um, Sebastian are like watching and it's terrifying. Mm-hmm. I think Sebastian is particularly, he keeps like almost getting killed that delicious by Chef crab. Louis. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, I don't know why they chose that. Maybe because it would be awful to like watch – Fish get, get continually be, yeah. beheaded, which yeah. is like what's in it. Yeah. Also, is it racist? I guess it might be. I don't know, man. You can't be racist to the French. French, who cares? It doesn't count. Fair enough. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe. Or just, I mean, I really liked that song. So, you know. Yeah, it's a fun thing, probably, I vaguely remember. Why yeah. not put it in? Yeah. Look, for me, this is not for me, right? I get why you like it. I get why people do seem to like it in general. Mm. Um, our son liked it. He was like, yeah, it was good. Yeah. But, like, just n- not for me. He did say to me, he was like, it was a little weird. <laughs> That's what he said. He's like, I'm mean, liked it, but it was a little weird. Yeah, we're I'm gonna, like, it to be fair, is a bit weird. We're gonna be, maybe he said it was a little weird because it didn't have superheroes in it. Oh, that yeah. might be the. I mean, or Transformers. Transformers: Rise of the Beasts. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. I liked it, but it was weird that it wasn't Transformers: Rise of the Beasts. Dad, <laughs> I felt like that too. Actually, yeah. also, I should point out my cinema experience. I came in there, sat in our chair. Then well, we left to go uh, to go to the bathroom, came back in, and a woman and her daughter were sitting right next to us. And she's like, "What's your seat numbers?" And I'm like, "These are my seat numbers. These are my seats, whatever." And she's like, "Oh, cool." Oh, I, uh, where's my seat number? And she shows me her phone. And I'm like, okay, you're on the other end. She, and she went down and then people were in her seat. Nice. And then she was came back and she sat down next to me and she, I'm like, they said they couldn't move because someone was in their seat. Nice. And that's the problem, that isn't is it? the problem. You're absolutely and she was like, right. yeah, that's what they said. And then <laughs> and then a whole lot of other people came in into the same role as us. Incredible. And there were so many kids up and down and whatever. It was like why cinema was Chaos, but also I was like, I don't care. It's a kids' movie, so plus you had your seats. <laughs> yeah, I oh, you, would care, you would care more <laughs> yeah. if they were in, in your seats because they'd be like, you, they'd be like, oh, well, actually, somebody's in our seats, and you'd be like, well, you get them to move out of your seats. <laughs> yeah, just I, I hate that when someone's just when it's like three people deep of like yeah. because that first person was just like, I don't understand anything. Do you know what the worst thing is? So I used to work in a movie theater mm. when the lights go down, the actual film has started, so it's not in the trailers. And someone comes to you and says, "Someone sitting in my seats," and you've got you have to get a torch and go in there and, and arrest then them. Look at That's the right. people's ticket and be like, "It's like you need 
to move. And then the dominoes start to happen. Yeah, exactly. And then you're pinging everywhere and it depends. Sometimes there's usually in a cinema at least two to four seats that we always kept free. For the for king. Like, for the king. <laughs> no, but really they were called like comp seats or some special name in case like fancy people came. Like the king. Like, for king the, comp. Like the king, exactly. <laughs> And he needs four seats. He's big. He does, or just King Kong. He would need a lot. No, of King no, Kong know. is the joke. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so go on. I mean, God, who needs? Look, I know. I really am the third wheel in this scenario, aren't I? This is a, this isn't yes and. This is a no stop show. It's a no situation. Yeah, <laughs> really wrong. Sensing that. That's all. Anyway, on, yeah. it's the worst, and then you have to sort of sort everyone out. And if there's someone already sitting in the comp seats, and yeah, and, you're and someone you get one person's like, I'm not always, moving. I don't always, want to move. What if always Godzilla someone, was in the comp seats? Whoa. Then we'd see some trouble, wouldn't we? There you go. And they're always in the best spot as well in the in the house. Yeah. So you don't want to give it to the people that are like grumbling about people, moving, yeah. but then you kind of have to because they're the ones kicking up a fuss, so because mm. they won't move. Anyway, all so, it is, so that's a lesson for all the grumps out there. Yeah, sit just in take, your sit, own, just, yeah. sit in the best seats. Yeah, do whatever. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> just complain and you get the you get the King Kong seats. Completely agree. I mm. thought you were like going to be Kong. like sit in your Ma- Mason. Seats. Imagine if King Kong came in. Oh, 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 <laughs> oh, oh, oh you, like, yeah, yeah. No, that's the stuff yeah. right there. I've that's never seen the, you so animated. That's great. <laughs> Good stuff. Anyways, are we are we saying <laughs> a best movie ever? Is that what we're Look, doing? I thought it was. I, I, given that we must pick one or the other, I'll say yeah. best movie ever. I didn't hate it. <gasps> no, same. Like, but it, you and, know, and as I, a remake, it was yeah. like they actually thought about it and changed some stuff in interesting ways. And mm. yeah, wow. But again, do you think they've learned their lessons from previous live action remakes, or do no. you think it's just a coincidence that this is slightly <laughs> better than some of the other? Rob ones? Marshall's a good director, though, right? He's what directed things. He yeah, he sounds like a guy who's had a storied history of directing things that are pretty good. A Rob Marshall. Oh yeah, he directed. A, Chicago. Mm-hmm. He directed Mary Poppins Returns, which I really liked. I really liked that too. Yeah. He directed Pirates of the Caribbean 4. He directed right. Into <laughs> the so Woods. Good. I loved that as well, actually. Because mm, you and love James the Corden. I t- no, but I don't mind him, <laughs> but you seem to really hate him when I do No, I don't hate him. Claire, were you in a performance of Into the Woods? I certainly was. No, I remember That's why we saw that, that, that didn't good. we? I that. Oh, God, I was wearing a terrible wig and we don't remember eyelashes. That. We don't oh. remember that. No. Fair enough. I played Cinderella's evil stepmother. Mm, that's like um, real life. That's like body real life. All right, cool. We got those tour dates for life. People want to check them out. Yes. Over the early July at this point. Correct. Yeah. London, 2nd July. Dublin, 6th of July. Yeah. Yeah. And then Edinburgh on the 9th of July. Edinburgh. Totally so you're going to have, you're gonna, you're gonna, you're gonna it's gonna have a. It's going to be awesome. You're going to have a fried Mars bar? No, I'm going to have a heart. I don't want to have a heart attack. Okay, fine. But are Disgusting. you going to have one? Yes or no? What is, no. What right. is wrong with you? I've had one. They're pretty good. Really? I wouldn't want to have one every day, but oh, I've never had one. No. Well. Are they a thing in Scotland? Yeah. Oh, no. Yeah. The Scottish. <laughs> no, I'm taking yeah. it back. Wow. No shows in Edinburgh. Oh, no. Whoa, Mason, the wow. this. Unless they ban the fried mars bar. <laughs> what do they, what do they batter it? Yeah. Then they put in a deep fryer. Yes. It also and ruins then, the oil. And then do they roll it in something as well? Like sugar. cinnamon and sugar. Yeah. That is the worst thing I've ever heard. What happens to the mars bar? You eat it, Claire. Yeah, it, it goes, goes in your tom tom. Then you do a God. weird turd. <laughs> <laughs> that looks like or it. never again. <laughs> I imagine it would look like a giant mask. Yes, bar absolutely. Now oh, you don't well, have now, to. Now well, you've spoiled fried <laughs> mask bars for yourself, really? yeah, Claire. Claire. Honestly, oh, oh, no, now you don't thinking. have to. But do you want to stick around for the what we're reading, what we're gonna read segment? It's basically suggestible. Wow, the less successful podcast where we talk about things that we've been reading and watching and doing. Nah, I'll leave it to you. Okay. Wow. <laughs> that never happens. Wow. People are always honoured to stay. That's right, yeah, that's right. <laughs> no one wants me around. Everyone wants to go back to the lovely banter between the two All of you. All right, well, if you say so. Wow. Well, yeah. I bet we'll get emails being like, I wonder what Claire was watching and that. She's rude. No, that's all right. I will stay. I will stay. <laughs> okay. You Under just suffering. have to say, wow. please stay, Claire. It would wow. be please our honour to have Claire. you. We'd I just really wanted, to have you. I really wanted to go back and watch the Ed Sheeran documentary. Go watch the Ed Sheeran documentary. Well, well, you you, there we go. You've done <laughs> it, Claire. There you can go. Claire, no, I want to listen to what you go you, on. You're not going to like the thing I'm talking about. I know yeah. you ever do, though. That's the premise of Ashley's Digestible. <laughs> wow. You can go, for no, real. No, I'm sitting here. Well, now it's awkward for me. All right, you know what it's time for, Mason? It's time for what we're reading, what we're going to read. Yeah, here it is. I'm doing the theme. What are we reading today? <laughs> so th- th- we explained it already. You're watching, <laughs> you're watching the Ed Sheeran documentary, are you? <laughs> yeah. What's it like? <laughs> I know. I only just started that. Okay. It's pretty good. Yeah? Yeah, I liked it. Do you like him? Yeah. We have a friend who you know. 
Uh, it's Ed Sheeran. It's Ed, Ed Sheeran. Edward Sheeran. Yes. Um, <laughs> where whenever someone like Ed Sheeran pops up or like like a guy who's kind of not traditionally attractive. Oh, yes. Uh, now I understand completely. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. You can edit this out. Edit out the name comics. But, um, <laughs> but yeah. we all know who it is. We all know who it is. So he's like, there's no way that that guy would like get the women that he does or or like all the money that he had if he wasn't, you know, if he wasn't a musician. And it's like. But he is. Yeah, but that's the point that he, they're like, they're really talented and people like them. Like that's. Yeah, yeah that's, exactly. Well, that's, he wouldn't, he wouldn't get the women he does if he wasn't charismatic and he could write <laughs> beautiful songs about them. Well, he is and he does. So. <laughs> is that because he's really bitter about it? I think there is an element of that of just like. Yeah. That could have been me. Yeah, yeah but, but you know what is really interesting about this doco and what I love, obviously, is like seeing someone's creative process. Sure. But he says in it, and you can tell, that he was so determined from the very beginning as a teenager that that is what he wanted to do. Mm. It wasn't like an accident. Someone didn't just see him playing in a pub and go, oh, this guy's oh, talented. This guy's got it. No, he saw people doing like writing songs and singing and he was like, I want to do that. They're gigging once a week. I'm going to gig three nights a week. Mm. And when they won't have me at the folk club, I'm going to go and do a hip hop night. And when they won't have me at the hip hop night, I'm going to go and play a jazz club. And that's why when you watch Once they've him- kicked me out of every club in the city <laughs> and I'm banned from everyone, I'll be the biggest star <laughs> exactly. in the world. Exactly. <laughs> no, but he just busked as well. So he just yeah. did gig after gig after gig after gig. But what I think is really interesting. Economy, you know? mm. <laughs> anyway, uh. but when you then you look at what he's doing, and he was just writing thousands of songs, mm. right? And you can hear that he also does have a background then in hip hop because of the way his lyrics move really quickly. I had yeah. never really thought about before why his songs are so catchy and there is an element of that as well. He is also very charismatic. He's like short and unassuming. Yeah, but that's what I'm saying. Like if, he, <laughs> if he's not very good looking, like, right? But he sort and that's, of we, also kind we, of is. We all agree that he wouldn't have, like if he was talented, <laughs> that women wouldn't like him, yeah? We all agree. Is that right? He wouldn't be famous and popular mm. if he didn't have, wouldn't have any of his abilities, right? No. Anyway, it's also it's just also incredibly heartwarming. I've only watched the first episode, but I I um I've heard from friends as well that it's it's really beautiful to watch, and mm. also a really great reminder because you think of someone like Ed Sheeran and you go biggest pop star in the world. Oh yeah, probably been made by a label or something like yeah. that. But the slog that he did to work to the point where he was writing so many songs and then eighteen became this giant hit. And suddenly he went from playing pubs to playing stadiums, mm. but it wasn't an accident. And I, he's the know, anti Bieber. I guess so. I assume. I don't know. I assume. Mm. Didn't Usher find Bieber on yep. YouTube or true. something? Yep. Yeah. I mean, that was part of it. He was coming to the fore just as like music was starting to go on YouTube and become yeah, more yeah. successful in that way in writing music. So just really, really interesting. I think also people dismiss pop songs and pop music like that, but to write a song. That sounds really simple, but that everyone loves yeah. and is so catchy is incredibly difficult. So um, probably. <laughs> anyway, I just it's great. I'm enjoying it. It's on Disney Plus. Great. I won't watch that, but I could. Mason, Good, what are you? True. What are you up to? Oh, I've been playing a video game. Cool. Uh, it's it's called, it's on Switch. It's called Warhammer Forty Thousand Bolt Gun. Ooh. And it's it's um if you can see it here, it's like a it's like an old school like Doom ah, style shooter. I love that. I've seen this but before. it's like it's like pixel it. art kind of like a. Ooh. Very kind of um, – it's set in the, the horrible Warhammer 40,000 universe, but it's just kind of like a throwback shooty, shooty game. And it's just uh, – Is it really good? I like it. It's a lot of fun. Yeah, cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's pretty good. Great. It's like Minecraft with murders in it. Yeah, so I Minecraft, cool, I guess. Yeah, that's <laughs> right. Yeah. Than, yeah. It can be. How many dollars? I think it was like twenty bucks. That's very reasonable. Yeah. Is there a physical copy? Because I like my games. I don't games. think so. I had a look. I like a games like I like my women. Physical copies on the Switch. What? <laughs> That doesn't make any sense. Are you just James, you should have waited me? for you should have, if you were gonna say something that's controversial and awful, you should have let Claire leave. And you know she doesn't listen to our podcast. You could have got away with it. What do you did cool. you just compare me to a switch? No, I'm, switch? it was just a cool joke that people like. I mean you can't you you gotta admit, Claire, it was a cool joke that people <laughs> like. I don't know if cool comes into it, but, you know, it was a joke. Thank you. It was you. a joke. I got a, a tweet here from uh, Robbie G, and this leads into what I'm going to talk about, hashtag Weekly Planet Pod. Have you guys read Ambassadors by Mark Millar? Uh, the recent issue features the ambassador from Australia, and he's awesome. You should check it out. I haven't, but Mark Millar, who – do you ever see the movie Kick-Ass? I think you see the movie um, Wanted. The Kingsman. The Kingsman. I did see that. He wrote those comics. Colin Fat. Colin yeah, Colin Fat. Oh, yeah, yeah. He kills all those people that. in that church. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You saw that. <laughs> yeah, I've seen that. That was – 
That was he just improvised that. Yeah. They're like, should wow. he talk? The 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 director's like, he should talk his way out of this. And he's like, no, I'd rather kill all these churchgoers. I'm Colin Firth. That's what I'm really like. That's what he said. <laughs> That's what he said. Yeah. So. But uh, so he's rebooting a bunch of new stuff, including you know this Mason, but Nemesis. He created this character called Nemesis, who's basically like he's he dresses like Batman, except he's all in white, and he's like he's got the skills of Batman, except he's awful. Mm. So he rebooted that character because he died in the previous version. But what happens, and this is a spoiler alert for the end of Nemesis, Uh (gasps) it leads into the wanted universe, which, Claire, you'll know as a universe where superheroes used to exist but all the bad guys banded together and killed them all in the 80s. Mm. So the Nemesis universe is actually part of this wider wanted universe. He's building his own universe. Exactly. Wow. And since he has that deal with Netflix because he sold Miller World to Netflix, it's probably all going to spill out onto all the – all other mediums, etc. Anyway, I thought that was interesting that that's the direction they're going to go. <laughs> now Claire is regretting sticking around for this segment, which I like. I, yeah, I feel like though you never wanted to stick around, if I'm honest, because when she said she was going to leave, uh-huh. yeah, that's what I think happened. I then, don't know what you're referring to. I'm really enjoying all of uh, these. I'm making very detailed so, notes. So, so Claire, uh, the, Mark Miller, he he sold Miller. Okay, I don't know what it is, <laughs> but he's 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 uh, sold all his properties to uh, to Netflix. And they've released a bunch of them and they're all sunk without a trace, basically. Correct. One of them got cancelled mid-season, Jupiter's I think. Jupiter's Legacy. Jupiter's Legacy got, got cancelled. Oh, like, another and thing. And everybody was like, everybody was like, we haven't seen this and if we had seen it, we'd think it was awful. We were the only ones who were like, yeah, I liked it. Right. I thought it was pretty fun. <laughs> yeah. It wasn't fun. I don't know if it was fun, but it was interesting. But we watched it. Yeah. So I have a question to ask you both. I was listening to one of my podcasts with women on it. No. Oh. Listen to one of your own podcasts, Claire. <laughs> With no. women on it. Anyway, it's a really good podcast. And one of the women was talking about how there's a, like an AI. Uh, she has a name, Claire. Yeah. One of the women. Oh, her name is Jessie. <laughs> okay, nice. Thank Stevens. you. Thank you. The podcast is Mamma Mia Out Loud. Oh, cool, great. Anyway, she was talking about the thing that everyone's talking about at the moment, which is like the AI thing that can like write everything and how are all the screenwriters and everyone's mm. really terrified because yeah, now it's like writing music. And we love that stuff. Terrifying. We talk about it every week. We love it. All of the things. Well, she was saying that now she reckons that Marvel movies are so formulaic that an AI could very easily write them. The average ones, Do you think so? I think they could write a bad one. Yeah. I think a couple of them. So a couple of more recent ones probably. Probably could have written, yeah. Yeah. I think the one, the, 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 the best of the crop, I think, the, the ones that you go, oh, I felt like they couldn't write a Guardian. I don't think they could write no. a Guardians. Well, they could write a Guardians. If you put the scripts for the f- the three Guardians movies in and said, can you make another one? It could make one, but I don't mm. think it would be any good. No. And you'd, you'd be like, this feels extremely derivative of the first three. And the way that like it seems to be that studios want to would reuse them is they, they're like, can you write a script for Succession or whatever? And then they would give it to actual writers and go, hey, fix this. Mm. And so they – they don't get the proper payment or writing credit because, but they but they basically they do write it because you would hand somebody like nothing, mm. like a skeleton of an idea yeah. that a machine spat out based on ideas that you gave it that somebody else already wrote. Yeah, mm. but we love that here. Yeah, we love it. We think it's great. <laughs> we think it's the future of uh, fiction. Uh, yeah, no, I I think that. Yeah, I think yeah, you're right. That's the way they want to go, mm. and that just to churn one out in five minutes with no effort, but. I've 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 been saying about this like if if you people need to be more critical of these Marvel movies and and that sort or of just stuff that generally. kind of like yeah that kind of thing generally because the more you accept it and you accept the flaws in it and the stuff that doesn't work and the and the stuff that falls flat the more they're like well they liked the last one then nobody complained about the last one and they still saw it so that's why there were five it. terrible Transformers movies yeah, in yeah. a row because they keep making a billion oh. dollars and, I and, and, yeah. fell asleep in one. And eventually, Correct. like a few movies down the road, the people who love Marvel movies are going to go, why was this one so bad? Yeah. Like all of a sudden I think people are going to go, oh, why was this one bad? And it's like, well, because nobody cares. You didn't care about the writing before this. Mm. And, and it's your fault. It's your fault, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, okay, good. Excellent. Thank you. That's answered my question. Mm. I do really think that though, I often say that to you, that the like I'll watch a Marvel movie if the script is really excellent. Yeah, and they, yeah. they do it like the recent Guardians was – Awesome. Like I think you would really like it, genuinely. Yeah. You like the other ones. Yeah, yeah. I love them. Mm. That balance, And I like Saw too. The balance. But you love the latest Thor, which we all loved. Oh, I heard that one. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, you know, that kind of really nuanced balance of yep. really believable dialogue and mm. heart and humour that they can capture is so amazing. But, I, yeah, I'd, I, I, I just so don't think a robot could really do that in the same way. No. No. I mean it could only really – I mean so far it can only really do stuff – 
that's come before. Mm. And a lot of, you know, there are genres where people go, well, I like that. I just want stuff that I've seen. But I don't think people really do. I think yeah. a lot of people, you know, Star Wars and et cetera, I think a lot of people like, well, we want the same we thing. We want the again. same thing. But I think what usually happens is somebody says, no, I'm going to do something different. And then the people who keep clamoring for the same stuff over and over again go, oh, no, actually, this is this is good. Yeah. Mm. Like it's, it's very, yeah. Good I example. think, I think. A lot of fans are like, no, we want to tell people. We, we want to tell the studios and the filmmakers what we want and they should make that. But I don't think most people know what they want. No. Mm. And if they get, they actually get that, it's not very interesting. No. Yeah. yeah. The, we, we don't need an AI to make stuff that's already been made. We need real people to make stuff that mm. is new and fresh. Yep. I totally agree, Macy. And has brand management in it. Brand management. Yeah. Brand in, uh, sponsorships but, and, and such. Do you know what that made me think of as well? I think at a deeper level that's the problem with politics too, because people think they know what they want, but they often don't. They need someone to be able to say like a definitively, no, <laughs> no, but I do think, I know what you, mean, you yeah. know what I mean? Like You want a, someone with a vision. With a vision for, something good, for the though. better, yeah. of, for the betterment of society yeah. and to then bring people along with that. I'm not saying that does sound like a dictator. <laughs> no, I know, what you, I know what you're saying. But do you know what I mean? Because often there's just like in our country, because of the election cycles are so short. Yeah, and the news cycles are like. What can I do hours. right now that will get me yeah. like, it, like some positive word of mouth? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Or up for the next election yeah. rather than what will be really good long term in 20 years and really good solid planning for our country and yeah. what the future of our kids. And so I do, I know we're talking about Marvel movies, but I, I, I think that goes more broadly too because then if we just only listen we off, obviously you want to be consulted and listen to what people say, but I agree that we also want leadership that is like fresh and forward thinking mm. and something about you know, planting trees for and is, generations to have shade, yeah, et cetera. Exactly. And also just isn't afraid to make choices that are um, not always popular, but are right and mm. good for the future. But what is right? Oh, great this question. Is it. Anyway, Who that's the philosophy. Uh, philosophy. That, that is that is the segment of the show though. You did it. I did it. I, I made it good. It. I'm going to go back to watch Ed Sheeran. Cool, man. Cool. Yeah, I'll tell <laughs> all about him. You have to bleep the name. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell your friend all your about him. Your old friend him. Beep. Yeah, exactly. I'll just <laughs> Beeping his, out a rude word. <laughs> I'll just send screenshots of him and say, handsome man. Yeah, what do you think? Yeah, what do That's you right. think? All right, Great. thank you for coming, Claire. Bye, Claire. Been a pleasure. Thank Bye. you so much. Bye. Oh, I also watch James. Oh, yeah? I watched a YouTube video. What is it? It's by a, a YouTube channel called Power Pack. Yeah. And it's about a Doom mod called My House. Have you seen this? No. It's about a really weird Doom mod. Okay. That's right in your wheelhouse, Claire. Claire is leaving. <laughs> She's <laughs> yeah. just nodding. I'm As if that's interesting, but uh, no, it is interesting. I'm gonna add this to my. Wa- yeah, that's they use that song. They use that. They use that song. So it's yeah, my. Is it? Song. What is it? Is it? What's the YouTube channel called? It's called Power Pack. P A Power P A K. People should check that out. All right. I mean, it's got five million views at this point, but uh, people oh, we'll should check, check it, out. it out. Cool, man. Yeah. All right. It's about a really weird Doom mod, and it's real weird. That is cool. Should we move to the next segment of the show? Let's do that. It's called Letters. Yeah. It's got a letters theme. I bet. Bye, Claire. Bye, Claire. The classic one was letters, oh, letters. We love you. Some letters, they're only a day away. I know they're here right now. We're going to do letters. Who was that? Who? The person who was in here. I don't know what you're talking about. Okay, great. Anyway, uh, (laughs) if you do want to reach the show. All all, uh, all that unpleasantness aside. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, we've got emails and letters and so forth. And if you do want to contact us with said emails and letters, you could hashtag Weekly Planet Pod at Twitter or That's Weekly right. Planet Pod at gmail. That's right. com. Mason? Yep. What's you got in the mailbag this Oh, I've time? got some things from the mailbag. Don't you worry about it. Okay. If you were like, are we going to let this um, Maryland and Virginia uh, oh, feud drop? No. We're not going to let it drop. We've opened a can of worms and we love it, James. I okay. love it personally. I love it when other states get involved as well. Oh, if you're if you're adjacent to any of those, if you're adjacent to Maryland or Virginia, and it's you're like poking your head, we're, in. we're gonna get in on this. Let Absolutely. us know. We would really appreciate this. But this was from Jackson. I sense a spin-off podcast in the works, Mason. Yeah, yeah. It's called Every State in America Hates Each Other, and we <laughs> love it. That's what we'd call it. It's from Jackson. Maryland drivers. Hi, Weekly Planet Pod. Marylander here, and I'd like to betray my people by letting you know anyone who says Virginia drivers are worse is lying and biased. 
I wouldn't say Virginia Whoa. drivers are lovely little angels of the road, but Maryland drivers are unhinged and everyone in Maryland knows it, especially if you're driving anywhere in the Baltimore area. My dad always fondly described to me as Baltimore driving, which essentially consists of taking any opportunity on the road, no matter how slim, to get to your location slightly faster. <laughs> That said, if you're embedded into the Maryland driver hive mind, it does have a sort of internal logic and rules, none of which necessarily line up with actual traffic laws, so that much is worth noting. Thanks, Maryland native ratting out his people for their scary road etiquette. Whoa! So that's exciting, isn't it? I didn't think, I didn't, th- I, I thought, you know, American state pride would never cause that to happen. You know yeah, yeah, I mean? yeah, that's crazy. No, there's rats, me. there's rats in the... I mean, if this is real, mm. you know? Oh, that's true. Oh, you think maybe this is... Maybe like a fake yeah. here. This is a Virginian. That's being like, like uh, I'm from here. I'm from here and actually we all suck actually. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we're rats as well. Some- we're, we suck at driving and we're rats. We're rat. We're, oh, that's a, I didn't even think about that, but that's incredible, James. <laughs> this guy's you. probably a fake rat. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, wow. Or he's real. He might be real. We don't have any way of might knowing. Might be a real rat. Yeah. Like one of those classic Baltimore real rats. If you are this fake rat or yeah, real, yeah, send us are. a photo of you and your flag, state flag. State flag and the and today's newspaper. Yeah. It's, it'll, it'll say, <laughs> no, because then you'll be able to buy it. Yesterday's newspaper. Oh, yeah. So from before yeah. we read the email, because otherwise he could just go and mm. buy a newspaper. And, and it'll say Baltimore News, and the headline will be, the wire stuff still going on. <gasps> all that wire stuff, all those still crimes in the wire still going. I would have. I haven't seen it, but I thought they would have got on top of it by the end. They mostly did, but then the, the main guy was like, "I mean, sure, we got the wire going, <laughs> but I think there's still going to be some more crimes in the future, and we'll have to watch out for that." Us here at the wire, you know? <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, where we. Live and work. Uh, we live, live and work, work there. Yeah. We live in our bunk beds at the wire, <laughs> which is what we call our police station, <laughs> the wire. Well, that's great, Mason. It is great, I think. Yeah. Got this from Nicholas Sandberg, who says, oh, yes. hashtag Wicked Planet Pod. Hey, guys, now that they've uh, that you wrapped the fast movies for Caravan of Garbage, will you be, will you be coming the last entries in the series uh, following uh, in the following years before Fast 11 and 12? Yes. We'll probably go eight to – we'll probably do eight, nine Hobbs and Shaw, okay, I'd imagine. Yeah, right. And then sure. – 10, 11, 12 will be a whole other – that'll be its own thing whenever – will be a whole other kettle of worms. If we even are alive by the time that mm, happens. That's right. And speaking of Vin Diesel, Riddick 4 is on its way. Does that mean you will cover the Riddick movies for Caravan of Garbage in the future? Potentially. Yeah. And what about this? Lastly, who do you expect uh, will cameo in The Flash? Will we get a Bale, a Clooney, a Dean Kane, a digital Reeve and West? Greetings from Sweden. I know there's been some stuff that's leaked that I haven't seen yet. Mm. I I don't know. Who all out? It seems by people are excited about who or what and mm. and whatever. They're excited or they're resigned or they're angry. Yeah. Or they're like, oh, of course. <laughs> typical. <laughs> oh, typical. Yeah. Typical DC. Anyway, oh. I can't wait for this Batman mm. movie to come out. That's right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh dear. Yeah. Here's an email: Maryland versus Virginia. Oh my this god. From Daniel. He Is this going to be every week forever now? Maybe. <laughs> I want to get some dirt. I want to get this to, to get real, real mean. Real and grubby rough. with it. Real grubby. Uh, uh, Daniel says, "Hey, you going, mates? I'm a native Marylander now living in Virginia, and I believe I can objectively say that Virginia drivers are worse. <gasps> you see, Virginia drivers were never on our radar prior to moving here. We were always more worried about Ohio and Pennsylvania. Oh my God! I know, right? Typical. Yeah. But Virginia drivers consistently have this nasty habit of pulling up to stop signs at full speed, like they're just going to f and go for it. <laughs> Only at the last second do they slam on their brakes, and you never know if today will be the day." We love it here, but there's just no question that Virginians are comfortable taking their lives in their hands behind the wheel. So this is a person who moved there. They moved from there. Maryland. From Maryland, yeah. Mm, I don't even know what to believe. Yeah, unless this guy's a rat, also. Oh this guy might God. also be a lying rat. Ah. What if both sides have got lying rats and they're doing cyber warfare <laughs> via this podcast? This is this is a double psyop, is what this is. <laughs> Completely agree. Yeah, 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 yeah. I don't know what to think, Mason, mm. but I do know what to feel, oh, yeah. and it's confusion. Mm. <laughs> Good luck. I'm feeling delight. The light is good too. Yeah, yeah, My yeah. goodness. Mm. What about this one from Steve Walker Mason? He says, hashtag Weekly Planet Pod. With Deadpool 3 having multiverse stuff and other versions of characters like Wolverine, do you think we might finally get to see Channing Tatum on screen as Gambit, even if it's just a cameo? Yes, absolutely. Hashtag Magic Cajun. Yes. I think you do it as a goof. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And they're all part of that friend group. Yeah, they're know? all friends and they yeah, hang yeah, out. And yeah. they, it could be him and... Um... Taylor Kitsch. No, no, no. Yeah, Taylor Kitsch, but also, who's his friend from 21 Jump Street? Jonah Hill. Jonah Hill. He could be in it as well. He could be, could be a different guy. I'm also Gambit. They could be two Gambits. Two Gambit Two boys. Gambits. Yeah, the Gambit yeah. brothers. That's right, yeah. Mm. We met in the multiverse somewhere. <laughs> yeah. Now we're two two good friends. Now we're good, yeah. But they have Gambit powers. <laughs> yeah. That's why we're called Gambit. The cards. Yeah, that's right. That he throws. 
Very good. We'll always be best friends, we guarantee. <laughs> That's what they'll say. <laughs> cool. Any more? Here's any, one more email. This is it from, about that thing? That's no, that? it's a different thing. Oh, thank God. It's, this is from Matt, uh, who says, my fiance hated you, but now she doesn't. Woo! Uh, hey, guys, greetings from Philadelphia. Streets of Philadelphia. That's right. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Bruce Springsteen. Bruce Springsteen, that's right. In January of 2020, I had my first date with a brilliant, beautiful vaccine scientist named Julia, who also happened to love movies, comic books, and TV shows. What? Once we were official, I thought, side bonus, we can listen to Weekly Planet Pod together. That's perfect. To my horror and surprise, she didn't like it. Podcasts like the Weekly Planet just weren't for her. Still, I try to have it playing in the background, knowing she was missing out. I even went as far as to cue it up to some of your funniest bits, which just happened to autoplay when we got in the car, but no doubt. Oh, my God. And that's our best stuff, too. You went, you went hard. Yeah, 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 yeah. And what's left after that? Just the dreck. You know? <laughs> Embarrassing for us. Years later, the caravan of garbage on Attack of the Clones, of all things, accidentally came on and she laughed. Yes. The next day, she came home and told me she'd listened to over a dozen caravan of garbage episodes while she was in the lab mixing up those vaccines. That's cool. We that's like right. that. Right. Now on our long summer car trips, I can at least split the time between you guys and those awful murder podcasts she likes. <laughs> Love the show and my... And my Sounds like she's trying to get you into the murder yeah, podcast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Look at all the murders they're doing, yeah. she would say. This you is know? cool. This is new. Gross, gross murders. Yeah. You know? It's cool. Love Maybe this. one day you'll be like, oh, my God, that person was beheaded and then buried, dismembered. And That's actually it. great. That's actually That's great. That's my attack of the clones, That's caravan right. of garbage. Uh, this well, is why we do the caravan of garbage, Mason. You pick a popular thing and then people go, oh. Oh, don't mind if I do. That's how you get them. Yeah. Uh, we get married August 26th. Can Julia be the official infectious disease aficionado of the podcast? Done and done. Done and done. Thank you, Matt. Matt's not taking any roles on. That's right. You know, which you I appreciate. Dare. Stepping aside. That's right. Great stuff, Mason. Anyway, that's the whole show, I think. It is the whole show. Folks, thank you so much for listening to the podcast. We appreciate it. We really From do. From the bottom of our hearts at the bottom of the ocean. Some people think we're ungrateful bitches they say that don't they yeah, yeah but it's not yeah. true but th- mostly our families say that to us <laughs> they say you're such ungrateful bitches but it's not true it's not true mostly it's mostly not true uh thank you uh for subscribing telling to the podcast for telling a friend about the podcast for leaving a five-star review on your podcast catcher of choice you know what, james you got some reviews there I do i'm just bringing them up right now this is from suggestive pineapple who says five stars you can just do it in app like mentioned any yeah. app that you're listening to it says right. con men you're listening on excel microsoft excel are somewhere. you uh, you can are review you in that these guys are con artists. First, they endear themselves to you with weekly videos on YouTube, and then you get older and have a job and start listening to their podcast, and you listen so much you realize you listen to every episode multiple times. Then you realize you're addicted to their content and listen to their connected podcast and guest appearances on other podcasts and eventually cave and you pay for a subscription to where this was leading along, all along, bigsandwich.co. Ain't that the truth, brother? What an evil plan, five stars. <laughs> Thank you so much. And this is from Dandor93. says, believe in yourself, five stars. said, I wanted to write a five-star review on this podcast, but I didn't believe myself enough to do it. Then I heard Nick Mason say, I know you don't believe in yourself, but you have, have you even con- have you ever considered believing in yourself? So here you are. Did you say that? Sounds yeah, like you better believe it, brother. You are very inspirational. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, people make um, those crocheted pillows with my face on them. You know, sometimes they have inspiring. Oh yeah. Sometimes they have inspiring words and stuff. It says leave a review. Yeah, it says leave a review, and there's a picture of my face. Like <laughs> that. Uh, folks, if you want to get into contact with us, you can go to weeklyplanetpod at gmail.com. You can also go to Facebook, Twitter, and Bandcamp. Oh, my God. Uh, you can go to the Planet Broadcasting Great Mates Facebook group if you want to have fun chats about podcasts and pop culture. You can also go to the Weekly Planet Pod uh, Discord and subreddit. I believe you. Uh, if you want to follow some people on the socials, they'd be all linked below in the episode description. Thanks to the wonderful Rob Collings. He's at Raw Collings on Twitter. He's at the Weekly Planet on Twitter. He edits this podcast. He makes videos. He does all sorts of crazy That's stuff. Right. It's crazy. He follow him to keep up to date with all the Weekly Planet stuff. Correct. You can also uh, follow me. Oh, just, we, we should slip this in here oh, every yes. week instead. We could put oh, in yeah. uh, Sarabi and Fidel and Maisie who oh, yeah. are a great mates group. They do a great uh, job over there. But also like various other things, yeah. editing, social media, et cetera, right. and so yeah. forth. Yeah. yeah, that's right. Amazing work. Do they do great work. They ban the bad guys. <laughs> uh, we don't like that. We don't like, no, we, we're the good guys. Yeah, we never ban anybody. <laughs> we're sweet angels. We never ban anybody. Uh, folks, uh, if you want to follow us, you can follow me at Wikipedia Brown on Twitter and Nick Mason on Instagram. James is Mr. Sunday Moves everywhere. If you'd like to support the show, you can go to patreon.com slash Mr. Sunday Moves. You can chuck in a buck uh, or an amount you will mm-hmm, not miss. Mm-hmm. That's the key. Yes, it is. Well, I, I, I fell down the couch. I don't miss it. Whoa, did it? Yeah. Or you can go to bigsandwich.co uh, for nine US dollars per month. You get bonus podcasts, movie commentaries, early videos, ad free podcast feed, all sorts of stuff, uh, video game let's plays. We've got all sorts of stuff up there and we're having a good time. Let me Absolutely. tell you. Absolutely. We're having right. the best time. We had a great time. What did we record recently? 
We recorded a commentary for a very special movie. Oh, yeah, Very finally. special and very relevant. Long time coming. That's my, right. An absolute favourite of everybody's and not just a specific thing that I wanted to watch, That's Mason. Right. Is it, was it? That's exactly right. That is yeah. exactly right and correct. Uh, thank you to the Brute and the Basilisk and Rackham for all our musical themes. If you want to buy a T-shirt, you go to tpublic.com. I do. Search for the Weekly Planet. Get a T-shirt or a mug or something. You oh. got a mug, I reckon. I'm a bloody Mouse mug. Mouse pad. I'm a bloody mug. Crocheted pillow. I'm a bloody mug. You are. It's true. You are a mug. <laughs> Finally, you've admitted it. Agreed. All right, thanks next everyone. Week, oh, next big week. movie probably. Yeah, probably a big movie. Uh, is it the, next week. Yeah, it's Spider Verse, right? Nice. Or is that when's that out? Don't know. Into the Spider Verse. It says release date March a uh, March twenty eighth, twenty twenty four. Well, I think that's right. wrong. Let me check this out. I think that's wrong, and I'm brave to say that actually. Spider Man. What's the new one called? Across the Spider Verse. Across the Spider Verse. I think yeah. yes. That comes out. Yeah, this week. Nice. Dude, thank God, because I was like, what the. Freaking frick, I said. You did say that. You said, what the freaking frick? And first of all, I said language. It's a family show. <laughs> yeah. And second of all. Oh, God, I'm looking forward to this one. It should be good. I hope it's better than The Little Mermaid, a movie that I thought was wonderful mm. from top to bottom. I just didn't want to admit in front of Claire. Yeah, yeah. You got a lot. Of, you told me a lot. You expressed a lot of your thoughts and emotions earlier. Yep, yep, yep. Off, off, off air. And mm. then you were like, but let's make fun of Claire when yeah. she shows up. <laughs> she'll say some she'll say some insightful stuff yeah. about, you know, feminism and 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 mean themes and meaning and stuff. And we can go, duh. Yeah. You know? And you said yes. I did say that yes. <laughs> I agree. Because yeah. that's fun. It's fun <laughs> for us. All right. Thanks everyone. You can grab that, Jimmy, guys. We'll see you next week. Goodbye.